Hi, you guys. I am here. Hold on, let me put that I'm live on my other channel. <laughs> I had to put that on real quick so that y'all can come. Okay, so how to be more feminine and less intimidating when you're out and about or on the phone or trying to meet guys online or just in general. First of all, you got to look feminine. You know, you can't look like you can't wear pants all the time. You can't curse a lot. You cannot speak slang or ebonics. You must smile. You must smile. You must smell good. You can't stink. Um, you must not be loud. Speak in a softer voice. Less loud. Don't be all like this. How you doing? Ah, la, la, la. Hey, excuse me, waiter. Don't be like that. Be, be so quiet that the man has to get the waiter if, if y'all are out to eat. Like, excuse me. Can you get the waiter's attention for me? You know, don't be all, well, this ain't the right order. You got this wrong. I see extra ranch. Don't be like that. And don't ask for extra ranch, okay? Mm. Unless you're eating alone, unless you're dining and you're not on a date, then you can get whatever. Okay, um, your breath, okay, your breath should smell good at all times. Keep some mints on you. Brush those teeth. How are you doing? You can be the most beautiful woman in the world, but when you open your mouth and that breath is stank, you just went from a 10 to a, a 2, okay? So keep breath mints, breath strips. Don't chew gum. It's ratchet. Chew gum with your kids. Chew gum with your friends. Not on dates. Mm -hmm. Someone says limit the alcohol That is a good idea Because some of you guys When y'all get a little tipsy Y'all start acting crazy So keep it to wine no, no liquor Don't order no hard liquor And if you do If it's just the festivities that are going on Like everyone's taking shots Sip your shot Be uh, I can't You know Or maybe only have one shot and don't shoot it like a man. You know, I know it might seem cool and they might want you to do it and they're egging you on. But subliminally in their subconscious mind, if you can't do it, you're more feminine. OK, I know you can do it because everybody knows we can do it. But just pretend you can't be like, oh, it's too it's too strong for me. <laughs> you know, you'll be drinking like that at home, whatever. But <laughs> just act. Keep your nails dead. Don't go out with no chip nails, okay? I don't care if you got to buy some press-on nails and super glue them things on. Do not walk out the house with ratchet nails, okay? Men, look at your nails. Whether you know it or not, they look. And your toes. If you're going to have your feet out, make sure your toes look good as well, okay? Don't forget the lotion. Soft skin. The appearance of soft skin is very feminine. So make sure like you put some type of lotion on anything with a glow to it that makes you look healthy and vibrant is what you want to go for. They have lotions with, you know, illuminating properties now, or you can get that Fenty Rihanna Lava or that Becca and put that on. Okay. And smile is very important. Yes. Yes. Always smile because it makes you look more friendly and inviting. Frowning and resting face is what intimidates a lot of guys from coming over. Like if you're sitting at the bar like this, they don't know what you're thinking. They don't know if you're happy, upset. If they approach you, are you going to dismiss them quickly because you're in some type of mood? But if you're sitting at the bar like this, you're already smiling. You're already in a good mood. So when you come, when they come over there, you're going to be happy to see them. 
you know, and they feel invited. So that resting face, I know a lot of people think that that's cute or, oh, that's just my personality. Then you need to act. Like I said, you need to be like, <laughs> la, you know, body language as well. Like your body language needs to be very feminine. Like you have to act if it's not natural. I know it's not natural for a lot of ladies because we're so used to doing so much these days that we just forget about that. And we just need to get the stuff done that we need to get done. So work on your hand movements. They have to be like fluid. You can't just be like this, you know, just be like, Oh, this is a really good magazine. Mm -hmm. Don't be like, you know, don't be like that. Be like, okay. Wow. I love her dress. Don't be afraid to compliment other women. It also shows that you're mature. You're not the jealous type and that you appreciate beauty when you see it as well. Okay. That's another feminine quality that you can compliment other females and that you're not so possessive like a man or jealous or have this huge ego like a man. Oh, her hair is really pretty. Don't ask him if he agrees. Just like, oh, her hair is so pretty. Oh, you were saying? Play with something. Y'all know how I'm always playing with my hair? Play with something. Get their attention on what, you know, because men don't play with their hair. Men don't sit there and go, or they play with their chest hairs. So play with your hair. Let that perfume fly. Let that, let him wish he was touching it. Be like, don't do it too much because it could become annoying, as y'all know. It's just a habit for me because I'm like, I'm petting myself I'm like a cat. Um, <laughs> but pitch a week. And, you know, if you have nice hands, show them off. Like, <laughs> you're so silly. <laughs> Accentuate your lips, like touch them. So he wants to touch them. Okay. <laughs> That's so funny. You know, get that attention on where you need it to be. You know, you don't just sit there like this. So what do you do for a living? So why did you leave your ex? So excuse me, waiter, I want extra rent. This ain't right. Take it back. So you don't do that because I know some people that will do that. Uh, give me the steak and lobster, please. Thank you. I know it's only lunch, but no, I don't want the lunch special. Give me the dinner portion. And put extra garlic butter on there. Extra scampi. Bring me some seasoning on the side because y'all don't season y'all food here. Mm-hmm. And bring me some of them wet wipes when you're done because my hands going to be smelling like fish. I mean, some women really don't have a clue on that you're not supposed to do all of that on a date. It's fine to do when you're by yourself. But you want a date. This man is sitting here like, what the? Mm? I know. I'm just used to having my stuff. I'm just used to having my food a certain way. I can't help it. Yes, you can. So, yes, yes no profanity, no loud talking. I already said that. Um, I know a woman just like that. It is so embarrassing. I bet it is. <sighs> You're choking at Starbucks. Or a lawsuit. Tell them, to, tell them it was something in their coffee and you choking. <laughs> Lawsuit. Um, I hope they're not hearing this. Sorry, Starbucks. I love you. Mm -hmm. Can I order a lot to see if he will spend like champagne? Um, order a glass first. Order a glass of champagne. And if he is smart or economical and he knows you're going to get another glass eventually or he's trying to get you drunk he will suggest the bottle but only order a glass that's more ladylike 
If you try to order a bottle and you are not a couple yet, it's kind of rude. So let him lead. That's another thing. You got to let the man lead. You give him a little hint and then you let him lead. So if you like champagne, just ask the waiter, oh, what type of champagne do you have? I love champagne. It just makes me all giggly inside. And it's, you know, it's a great drink for brunch or, you know, it's not too heavy. So what kind of champagne do you have? Or ask him if he suggests any type of special champagne that he likes. Oh, what kind of champagne do you think I should get? I mean, I'm just going to get a glass. Well, why don't you get the bottle? Okay. Let him lead. Just put the idea in his mind. Don't push him, but plant the idea. That's more feminine than masculine. Okay. I know I've, I've had a lot of conversation with ladies who can't let their man lead. Even if the man is a good provider and having, um, you know, it makes good decisions, there are some women that won't let them lead. And that is important to let a man lead as far as like him feeling like the masculine part of the relationship. Plant ideas in his head. He will go with them if he thinks you're going to like it. But let him decide. Let him lead. Because if you try to tell him everything to do, how to do this, how to do that, He's not going to feel successful. He's not going to feel accomplished in front of you. He's going to feel like you told him how to do everything. And that's why he is the way he is. And you only appreciate him because you created what he is today. And he will eventually go seek another person who doesn't know all of that and be that man that you built for her. Okay. Because you can't truly appreciate him because you pushed him to that person his new self. Okay. Let, yes. Acrimony. Yes. So don't do that. Stop being their mother. That is not feminine. That is, um, it is more mm, maternal, which is, which is a little bit different. Okay. Maternal is for children. Feminine is for ladies. Okay. For women who want to seduce and, you know, get that extra attention from by men. When you walk through the store, if you're single, you, you need to be given a walk. If you were trying to pick up, go to the nice grocery store, go to Whole Foods, go to a nice area, put on, don't wear heels though, because that's a little bit too much. You know, that's a little bit too desperate. Thank you. We care a lot. I appreciate you for the donation. Wear like you maybe kitten heels, maybe some nice, um, you know, if you're just coming off of work, that's understandable, but don't get dressed up like you're going to the club to go to the grocery store. Okay. Don't do that, but dress cute and walk with a walk, walk, have a feminine walk when you walk so that you catch all the, the attention. You know what I'm saying? Like if don't just walk like this, don't just walk down the thing, pushing the basket, take small, take steps and like move your body, like practice like you're on a runway. And the best thing is like, if you're short, especially and you can't reach, ask whoever's around, man, can you please get that for me or try to reach it? And it's like, ah. I've done that so many times. And this like tall dude came like six, five, He's, I'll get that for you. And, uh, I know I'm married, but, um, I couldn't really reach it. And Layla and Sasha were like, he's tall, mommy. Now, if I was single, I could have, like, oh, thank you. Can you come follow me around and reach my other things? <laughs> um, in a joke. Of course, he's not going to follow you around. He might. Um, tell you what, I'll give you my number. If you can't reach something, I'm going to be in the store for about 30 more minutes. You can text me. Tell me what aisle you're on. Okay. <laughs> Anyway, oh, thank you, Keith Franklin. She wrote, what are your thoughts on a woman ordering to go plates for her children while she's on a date with the children at home? Oh, Lord. I would say that it's super de duper ghetto. Not super duper, but super de duper ghetto. Why? Because. Like, you can order your kids a pizza, okay? That is why I don't like it. I, I I would never call that woman back if I was a man. I'd be like, I know you lying. 
you better get it. You better you. This is gonna be your last meal with me. I'm sorry, that is just ghetto. Um, I also think it's unladylike unless the man makes you do it or suggests that you do it to take a to go, like leftovers. I think it's unladylike to take leftovers home. <laughs> A doggy bag. Don't take that home. I know some of y'all grew up poor. I know you're not used to leaving food behind, but just do it. Do it. Okay. Save your reputation and do it. Okay. Leave that food on the plate. If you can't eat it, don't take it home unless he suggests it. Are you going to take that home? Oh, I don't know. Um, I don't like microwaved food. So I don't know if it would taste, you know, great the second time around, but it was so delicious. Next time I should ask if they have a smaller portion, you know, um, if like suggest like, would, would you like to take it <laughs> or take it and say, oh, thank you. Or, you know, if he suggests it, you take it. If he doesn't say anything, don't take that mess. The whole car is going to stink like that food if y'all are riding together. And then you, if you're going somewhere else after dinner, you have to worry about it spoiling or getting bad or, you know, getting growing microorganisms and stuff on it. Um, should we intentionally leave some food behind? Yes. Don't eat all the food on the plate. Don't sleep. Don't. Don't. Lick the plate. Basically, leave some food on the plate. I don't care if you want it. Leave the stuff you don't really like. OK, but leave something. Otherwise, you look hungry and they were like, you want some more? I, I know at nice restaurants, they give you smaller portions. That's fine because usually they give you more than one um, course. <laughs> if they ask if you want dessert, don't answer. Let him answer and look at him. And if he asks you if you want dessert, it's like, oh, well, I don't know if I have room, but if you want, if you get one, maybe I'll take a taste, you know, but don't order yourself a dessert. It is greedy. And learn some table manners before you go out to eat so that you're eating correctly. Go on YouTube and find some table manner videos and don't just be like pulling a fork out off your teeth and like putting your elbow on the table and stabbing the food and be like, mm -hmm. you know, don't be scooping with the fork like this in your thumb. Don't do that, please. I don't, I wouldn't even do that at home. If it's, if I can't get it, it, it ain't meant to get in my mouth. Okay. Cause I know some people that scrape with their thumb and I've seen them out and I'm like, what? No. Um, don't chew with your mouth open. Don't talk with food in your mouth. If they ask you a question, politely say, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm chewing like, and then answer the question. Don't be like, uh-huh. Um, don't lick your fingers. Yes. Don't lick that. Put your napkin in your lap. Don't set it on the table and then do like that. Sure. What if, what if by if he takes you to meet his friends or family and they offer, offer what? Oh, thank you, Firestar, for the donation. <laughs> yes. What if the waitress starts flirting with your date? Okay, you can't fight in the restaurant. You can't act ghetto. You can't be like Sharkeisha. You can just call it out like, he is handsome, isn't he? He's great in bed too. Or, oh, he's handsome, isn't he? I got a good one, didn't I? Like, you know what, she, what she's doing and she, you're calling her out and letting her know, I see you. But... Giving him a compliment at the same time, making her feel stupid. Like, I know you wish you were sitting here instead of working. Maybe you should uh, level up. Pick out, a, if you are if you want to be nice, nasty, pick out a flaw on her. Be like, oh, you're so pretty. Who's your dentist? Like, 
like she has messed up teeth. You're so pretty. Who's your dentist? Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, I used to have, I used to have that and I, I got like Invisalign. So you should ask your dentist. Yeah. You, I mean, it changed my life. Yes. Like point out our flaws, but give it, but be nice. Be nice nest. Oh, who's your dermatologist? Oh my God, I love your eyebrows. I saw that same look on Name a Drag Queen's um, Instagram or YouTube. I saw, oh my God, I love your eyebrows. I saw the same, like Patrick Starr, you know who he is? <clears throat> yes, on YouTube, he does the same type of brow. Oh my gosh, you're so good. How you doing? Yeah. <laughs> I gave the waitress a dirty look when my date wasn't looking. She got scared. And <laughs> you got to be nice, nasty. That way he doesn't sense that you're jealous, but that you're friendly and embracing and just, you know, in the South, in the South, that's how women like classy women insult other women. They give them a nice, nasty compliment. And they'll go back and forth smiling. Oh, I love your earrings. <laughs> I saw those at the Dollar Tree. They're so cute. I almost got them, but I'm allergic to <laughs> fake jewelry. Okay. That's how you do that. Okay. <laughs> Give them nice, nasty compliments. That is the feminine way to shut someone down. Okay. Okay, I can give y'all a hundred of them because I do them all the time. So, and then, you know, let him, if, I mean, if you live in the South, a lot of gentlemen will pull out your chair to sit down in the restaurant or the waiter will. If the waiter doesn't, you just stand until the man does. You know, it lets him know that you're used to a gentleman, you know, and struggle with the chair. If you don't pull it out, be like, ah, this chair's heavy. <laughs> that way he'll know next time. Pull that stuff out. Okay. I'm scared to do that. What if they spit in my food? <laughs> um, usually there's too many people around for them to spit in your food, especially at a busy restaurant. And when the plate goes out, it's sitting in an uh like a place that keeps it warm. The chef puts it out and then the waitress carries it to the table. There's people all around her. She can't just go spit in the food. You know, I mean, I'm sure they could, but I would be more worried about that at a fast food place than a restaurant. Because <clears throat> there's too many people around. There's cameras. And that's it. Mm -hmm. So make sure, you know, if you have a deep voice, if you sound, if you are just naturally deep voice, like I am, like I, I think my voice might not be the deepest voice, but it is pretty deep. When you speak to men, either soften it or lighten it or do both. So my man voice, like when I talk to a man and try to sound feminine, I'm like, oh, okay. I, I raise it to one octave. Oh, okay. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. That's not my real voice. This is my real voice right here. Hello. How are you? When the, when the, um, the telemarketers call, they get, hello, who is this? You know, mm -hmm. when, when the husband or someone calls a masculine voice is on the phone and they're, you know, I'm trying to get some free stuff. Hi, how are you? <laughs> Always start with the greeting, not just hello, but ask a question with it. Hi, how are you? That way they have to talk back and 
you start the conversation. How do you curve a mark coming down from your out of town to see me as far as sleeping together? Um, <laughs> I love your wording. Um, suggest that he gets a hotel room and don't spend the night. Tell him you'll meet him for breakfast. Then tell him it's that time of the month. Okay. Ha ha ha. Okay, men tell me I talk very sexual like I'm moaning. You all should try it. I think it works. True. Is a brunch date a big no? Brunch? No, because you can order alcohol. You can order food. Brunch is okay. Lunch is okay. Coffee? No good. Unless he is giving you money beforehand or bringing you some money, okay? And he just don't have time to eat. And he just want to get in and get out, give you your money, say hi, whatever. But brunch is good, okay? Are bright pink nails okay? And um, it depends on your skin tone. Because bright pink on darker skin tone will, might look a little ratchet compared to bright pink on a light skin tone. You know, you want to keep it not so bold. You know what I'm saying? If it's too much, that's all they're going to focus on. The contrast. Oh, my God. Look at those nails. Oh, my God. What the hell? You know, keep it so it's not all that they see. They're not seeing a laser light show when you're talking. They just, it's subtle. Like, like, see mine? It's subtle. It's nice. You see it, but it ain't just zoom in on me. Okay. Um, if you're going to do something like that, it should be on your eyes so that they're looking in your eyes or your jewelry so that they're looking at your skin. Okay. How do you attract guys to ask you on a date, not sex attire letter, but um, you be what most men want. You classy, feminine, smiling, make subtle eye contact, but then move away, letting them know it's okay to come over and don't have the resting face. Keep your smile, you know, giggle, laugh when they talk. Mm hmm. They like the giggle. They like the laugh. Um, I used to wear neon pink nail polish when I was a teenager. Yeah, I mean, teenager, psh, do what you got to do. But when you are trying to secure a wealthier man, they can't take you in public with that crap on. You know, they can't take you to nice places with that on. OK, remember, you have to fit in the, the class that they're in and that does not fit. How do you know you're holding power in the conversation, Shira? Um, it's not about the power. It's about the seduction. Okay. So they should have, they should feel like they have all the power, but you should feel like they're trying to impress you. Okay. That's the true power when they're trying to impress you. That's how you know that they like you because they're going to keep trying to impress you by talking and, and bragging on themselves and, and telling you things to make you laugh or smile or be impressed. Um, thank you. This is Elf, actually. I did a video on my beauty channel, Ashira Star, of this palette and this lip. Shira, most men prefer light skin than dark. Can What can I do? Actually, that's not true because I know a lot of men who won't even talk to light skin chicks, especially if they're white, white guys. They don't like light skin women. OK, it's just like dating a, a white person. With black hair. White guys will date you with no problems. Black guys have color issues because it is 
you know, talk to them. So, you know, you got to deal with that. That's just how it is. Can't change it. That's just how it is. So you, you play the hand you're dealt. That's all you, that's all I can say. You just play the hand you're dealt. You can't make somebody like you, you know? So you got to play the hand you're dealt. That's it. Um, and it doesn't matter. We know this. So play the hand you're dealt. Go get you somebody else. I mean, I would, if I were dark skin, if I were darker, if my skin was dark, I would definitely go where I am most celebrated. I don't care who it is. I will go where I'm definitely most celebrated and put on a pedestal. I am sorry. I don't care who don't like me. I know who do like me. And that's where exactly where I will go. And I will flaunt it, rub it in everybody's face, post it everywhere and be happy. Okay. I'm not going to focus on what I can't have or what I have to struggle to have. I'm going to focus on what comes easy. That's smart. So y'all need to start doing that. I, it, I don't care if you find them attractive, if you find black men attractive, but they don't find you attractive, then that's a one way situation and you're going to be paying their bills. So go for someone who thinks you're attractive. Remember? I'm, I just play the hand I'm dealt, okay? I make it work. And it's not about light skin or dark skin. It's about go where you are appreciated in every way. I don't care where it is. I think we need to get out of that. I think someone posted this in a group, one of the groups. We need to get out of, you know, only being attracted to one race. We need to be attracted to a class. Okay, because it's not about in the future, it's not going to be about race anymore. It's going to be about class. What class system are you in? Are you the broke? Are you in the broke class system? You know, <laughs> get with the class system, not the color system. Okay. And the only and the great thing is that when you are with another race and a black guy that you would normally find attractive sees you with that other race, they're going to be like, dang, what am I? He might go start dating darker chicks because he sees that someone else who makes more money than him, probably maybe someone who um, can provide and someone who's probably, um, you know, more, uh, more educated can have you and you're their prize. Now they're going to be like, maybe I need to see what's up with that, you know, and they, and they might go and try to change themselves, but they can only change themselves. You can't change them. You have to lead by example and like, okay, well, you don't want me. Guess who do? Okay, CEO of this corporation who just bought me a new uh, Range Rover. That's who won't me. Okay. <laughs> I don't have to sleep on the mattress on the floor. Okay. So <laughs> that's how you do that. Just go, just go make yourself available to whoever will put you on that pedestal. That's all you have to do. If you can't do that, if you have low self-esteem and you don't think that you're able to conversate with other races, then work on it. Work on it or suffer your consequence. Level up or stay where you are. That's just it. Mm -hmm. I noticed light-skinned black guys love them a chocolate sister and a lot of no, not dark ones. Love dark ones. I don't know. I think people just think about what's popular or children when they, oh, thank you. I don't know how to pronounce this. Zano is the X pronounced. That's a Z. Thank you. Birthday coming up. How do I tell him the gift I want? Tell him. Shoot. My birthday is coming. I want, you know what I want? Then tell him. That's what I did to James. 
we were dating, let's see, maybe three months, four months. And my birthday was on the, around the corner. I said, I want this new Louis Vuitton. Showed him the picture and everything. This is what I want. I want anything else. This is what I want. Mm -hmm. She asked, should I get him a birthday gift? We've been dating for four months. Okay, how much money has he spent on you? If it's not a lot, get him something less than $50. Less, okay? Don't go all out. Get him something meaningful, but not expensive. Maybe an engraved pen, maybe a money clip, just something that he has to carry with him and remember you by. That's sentimental, but not expensive. That way he's always thinking of you when he pulls it out. He wants to date exclusively and I don't. Just lie. Say you are dating exclusively. What? Thank you, VJ. Who cares? As long as he thinks you're dating him exclusively, great. You don't have to. Just lie just like they do. What? I mean, what? Where are these morals coming from? Why do you have morals but they don't? <laughs> Thanks, VJ, for the nice donation. Good morning. Someone says, good morning, thieves. It's not thieves if they give it to you voluntarily. It's not thieves. Sure, I want to thank you. I have a sugar pop that gives me whatever I want. And he pays six months ahead on my rent and my car. Not thank you. Uh, uh, car note. Thank you so much. You are welcome. That is the life you deserve. And so do other women. Most women don't know that they deserve things and that they can get them and have them. So they don't even try. Society has told you that you're supposed to be this and you're supposed to be that. But when you go out and do the exact opposite, you get more. You get more. Yes, you do. When you act feminine and demure and you date older guys and you tell them, oh, well, you have to provide for me. They will, you know. They will. You can have it, okay? There's so many women in the group who have are writing me, girl, I just got my first Louis Vuitton and this, this, and that. No man ever spent over this much money on me ever. I'm like, congratulations, more to come. Just keep doing what I'm just keep doing what I'm saying. Just keep doing it. You're gonna get more. <laughs> what is feminine energy? Having feminine energy is having a feminine essence, the exact opposite of a male essence, soft, quiet, demure, slow, sensual versus loud, obnoxious, egotistical, you know, um, and trying to impress. It's the exact opposite of that. Being the receiver and not the giver. Not dominating the conversation. Mm -hmm. But why? Yeah, but why would they want to give it to me? And why should I expect it? Because they probably want some sex. And if you're not giving it up easy and acting like you like sex more than they do, then they're going to they know that they have to impress you to get to that next level. So. They will invest in you. It's called an investment. How to be more feminine and less intimidating. Give us all your tips. I did in the beginning of the video, but I shall go over some more. Don't be loud. That's number one. Soften your voice or lighten your voice. Make sure that you wear dresses, feminine colors, perfume, smell good, look good, have some makeup on your face, you know, nails done soft looking skin that they want to touch. If your skin looks crusty and ashy, put some like highlighting drops in your lotion or buy some of that lava by Rihanna Fenty or get you some Becca and rub it on your skin so you look healthy and glowing. Men will look at that and be like, I want to touch her. Want, she looks so soft. You know, I bet she smells good. I just want to see what her hair feels like. You know, if you play with your hair a little bit, I want to, she smells so good. You're seducing him 
and smiling the whole time. You're not frowning. Someone says long hair. Yes, the longer your hair, it's been, they've already done surveys, men like long hair. So either get some weave, wig, or grow your hair out. But they like longer hair, at least past the shoulders, you know. You're going to do anything, at least go past the shoulders, like maybe to here at the shortest. Um, you know, this is a wig, but I'm growing mine out because I cut it and I'm growing it back out. But about this length, it's pretty good. Or you can go a little longer, but not too long because then it's trashy. Okay. Um. Mm -hmm. So what about a deep raspy voice as a woman? If you're if you have a deep raspy voice, you gotta be extra feminine everywhere else. And you gotta quiet your voice. And then you gotta be like, yeah, okay, let me see. <clears throat> Let's see if I can do one. Yes. I don't know. You're just going to have to be extra flirty, feminine, wear dresses, and everything else has to pop, okay? I'm not saying it's not sexy, but it, you just soften it and be extra feminine everywhere. My hair is naturally curly. I love my curls. Is that too immature? Men who are wealthy... And are going to take you to nice restaurants and nice places and spend money on you. They need you to fit in. Okay. And sometimes the curly hair look does not fit into that class. So you need a more polished look. So if you don't want to straighten your hair, just throw on a wig and take it off when you get home. Okay. You got to fit in for them to feel comfortable around you, for them to be attracted to you, for them to want to show you off to their peers and their class. You can't be like, you're going to accept me as I am. You, really, they, you know, men are just like women. They have preferences. And if you don't fit into their uh, preference or if you don't fit into their standards, they're not calling you back. OK, that's just it. Mm hmm. If you want to buy my book on YouTube, it's too pretty to pay, not YouTube, Amazon, too pretty to pay bills. Just type that in when you get on Amazon and click on books. Shoot, I'm 5'10". I feel masculine. How do I feel feminine while tall? I'm tall. I'm 5'9 and a half. Wear dresses. Um, Wrap dresses are cute. Sheath dress, sheath, what, sheath dresses are cute. Um. Most men like short women will find some date taller guys or date guys that are at least maybe 5'11 or 5'10. And if you're extra feminine with yourself, you won't look masculine. You'll look like a model, you know. So especially if you're slim, you'll look like a model. If you're if you're bigger, then you need to dress more feminine, you know. That's it. I have a someone says baby voice. Any tips on online etiquette when trying to land a sugar daddy? Also, how do um dang, I can't find the question now. Um, I just say be original. And say something different and don't put the same type of pictures up. Put classy pictures up, not slutty pictures, classy pictures, okay? Classy pictures. How do you wear your hair to bed? Scarf, no wig. How do I wear my hair to bed? I put it in a bun or a ponytail, okay? I don't wear scarves. I don't to bed. Like, there's, they make satin pillowcases now, so you don't have to do that, you know? And I just wake up early and do my hair. That's all I do. Now, if you're sleeping with a man, you can do that. If you don't sleep with a man, do whatever you want. If you're not sharing a bed with a man, it don't matter. You know what I'm saying? If you're not in the same house as a man and he's, if you snatch it off before he wakes up, I don't think it matters 
put it on after he go to sleep. Shoot. <laughs> I know they don't like that. I know for a fact they don't like it. So don't do it. They tolerate it. And that's different than liking it. Thank you. Some, someone says they got my book and it's worth buying. Thank you. You're six nine? No, I'm five nine. <laughs> Wish I was. I, if I was six nine, I'd be like in the Guinness Book of World Records or something. Um, for the tallest woman. My book, too pretty to pay bills on Amazon. It's a ebook. You can download it. Too pretty to pay bills. Yes. What if you're insecure about stretch marks on your stomach or arm? Then hide them. They make spray foundation now. You know, Sally Henson. Get that sprayed on. Put some foundation. You know, people can cover up tattoos. You can cover up stretch marks. You can get to getting. They make that waterproof foundation that covers up tattoos. You can just scrub it on, put some powder on it, let it air dry, put some highlighter on it so it looks like real skin and go about your day. <laughs> or don't show your skin. Or turn off the lights when it's time to get to getting, you know? I'm fast, I'm five seven and a half. I think I'm so tall. Guys think I'm so tall. Well, again, you're dating short guys. And if you're wearing heels, you might be super tall. <laughs> but someone's going to like you. They're going to think, you. oh, you're a model and you're tall. Shira, sure, is it okay to date a man from seeking arrangements when you want to get married? Well, how are you going to meet people if you don't date? <laughs> I mean, I met James in a bar. I don't think he was looking for marriage. <laughs> right? To make you feel better, Beyonce is 5'7", and a lot of men think she is attractive. That's true. All the supermodels are tall, and billionaires like them. And they wear heels. <clears throat> are jeans and a lacy top camisole feminine in the daytime for running errands not for dates I say wear dresses or skirts for dates why unless you're going to like a place where you have to wear pants like if you're um even like most places you can still get away with wearing a skirt or dress but I say I always wear a skirt or a dress on dates because it looks more feminine and men are always wondering what's under your dress and they're mesmerized by dresses. I promise you, every time I wear a dress, I get more attention than I do wearing jeans or pants or whatever. Okay. Even from women, they're like, oh, I love your dress. Men are like opening doors, treating you more feminine because you have on a dress. You don't wearing pants like them. You know, if you drop something, they're going to pick it up because you got on a dress. Oh, <clears throat> they wondering what's under it. What color panties you have when you got on pants. They're not thinking about that. They're, they're not thinking about what color panties you got on under your pants unless you got an ugly panty line. But when you wear a dress, they sure are. They're looking at how nice your legs look. They're thinking about what you have under there. What kind of lingerie you have on, you know. So that's where you want it. I'm seeking arrangements only for gold digging. I don't want to confuse that. I meet, make them think that I only want. An I don't understand that question. I don't know if you were answering someone, though. So, um. Yes, I, I have a lot of dresses, sundresses, 
flowy dresses, A-line. I have skirts, wrap dresses, sheet dresses, all kind of dresses. Not too tight. Don't wear them fashion Nova dresses. Get you some nice dresses that fit. Don't try to go. If, if it's tight, go a size up. It doesn't matter if you don't wear that size. It matters how it fits you, okay? Just because your waist is a certain size doesn't mean your hips and your boobs are the same size. So you might have to go up and either have it taken in or just let it be a little bit loose, you know? If you're underweight wearing a dress, it's not flattering. Depends on your weight. Well, wrap dresses look good on every type, you know, because it accentuates your waist and it covers up the other parts and it looks good on every type, even skinny people. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. There's a fundraiser at a golf place. How do I get involved? Go there. They have restaurants. They have bars, right? Mm -hmm. So you're interested in learning. Okay. Mm -hmm. Or your dad golfed and he loved golf. He loved golf. My dad loves golf and I miss him. And this makes me think about him. I was always interested in the game and I want, you know, I like, I like meeting people that remind me of my father. I don't know. Make it up, child. Um, so being more feminine includes, you know, your manners. You got to have manners. No cursing. No slang. No, uh, 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 well, uh, uh, what had happened was none of that. Speaking correct English. Pronouncing every syllable in the words. <laughs> Think of Kerry Washington. She is like the perfect example of a feminine woman. That's that's my go-to when I want to think about a feminine woman. I think of Kerry Washington. She has manners. She's always smiling. Maybe too much. She's always pretty. Skin looks always flawless. She's always dressed to impress. She's always speaking correct English. She doesn't curse her. That is who I go to when I think a feminine lady, okay? There's other examples, yes, but that's who comes to mind with her, with me. Um, Vanessa Williams, yes. Yes, I I love Vanessa Williams child. She is fierce. <laughs> Even at her age, she's still she could still pull a 20-year-old. <laughs> um so dainty Mike. You don't want to go overboard with jewelry sometimes because it's distracting from your beauty. So you don't wear a bunch. Maybe like I wouldn't wear these on a date. OK, like this is just because I'm kind of uh, boho chic today. But if I were going on a date, I would wear some stud earrings, maybe like diamonds, pearls or um, something like stud, but really pretty. I would wear like a cute necklace or a statement necklace and one ring. That's it. Or if I don't have on a necklace, I wear a bracelet. Or if I don't have on a ring, I wear a bracelet. Or, you know, don't wear everything. Don't wear your watch. Don't wear your bracelet. Don't wear your ring. Don't wear your necklace and your earrings and a brooch. Don't wear all that together unless it's super simple and you can't really see. Oh my gosh, how is Velvet? Velvet ran out of the house. She ran. She was astray when I adopted her. And I don't think Rico liked her too much. And she bolted out of the door. I think my husband 
left the door open and she ran out. But we're going to put up posters because she can't be far. She's And I've already told the neighbors, but she's somewhere around here. And I put cat food outside. So hopefully she comes back. <laughs> I, th I think Rihanna is edgy and she's feminine as well, but she's edgy because she's an entertainer, you know? So, you know, that like, I know sometimes she curses and she smokes weed and stuff, but she's not dating the type of man that y'all are probably going to be dating and she's already rich. So cut that out. Like, don't tell <laughs> Don't ask them, like, especially if they're older guys, don't say, do you smoke weed? Because that's just ghetto. Uh, do you smoke weed? Uh, you know, don't ask them that. I know that's the, the typical question to ask on a dusty date, but don't ask that on a classy, okay? Keep it classy. <laughs> and don't, if you smoke it, don't go in the, on the date smelling like it. Please. In fact... <laughs> You should stop. <laughs> okay. Someone says, ladies, just be yourself. Okay. Yes. Be your feminine self. If you're yourself, you're going to be more masculine than the man, most likely, because most women are doing the man's job these days. So being yourself might not work out. Okay. Don't listen to men. They don't know. So, does he have a good... Oh, y'all are talking to each other. So, why do women smoke, and especially weed? Come on, y'all. What is that? Hanging around too many Dusties? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Growing up with Dusties? I know it's weed day, but... If you are living in a state where weed is legal and you like to be high, opt for the brownies <laughs> or the candy. Don't go around smelling like smoke with a, a weed voice and weed lips, okay? It also makes you look ashy gray. You start looking you start looking like a dusty literally. <laughs> They be like, you can tell, like, whenever I meet people, I can automatically tell they smoke or not because their lips, their skin, straight up, you can tell. You might not think you can tell, but you can tell. <laughs> lips change color, skin changes colors. They start talking slow. Their brain slows down. Ooh. <laughs> I don't know why I'm offended. Don't be offended. Look, do it on your on the weekend when you're or whenever you're not dating. But and if you do that, scrub your lips, get you some lip scrub, exfoliate, take supplements, put extra highlight on so you don't look gray. <laughs> the celebrate weed day is going to treat myself to Starbucks. What if you don't drink, but your date is drinking on the date? Then order a cranberry juice that looks like a drink. Okay. Order a cranberry juice or a club soda and just pretend like you're drinking. If you have something in your hand, he's going to be less likely to see the that you don't drink because some men like dating people that drink because it's fun to get a little tipsy together. So just drink a cocktail juice or something. Okay. And just be naturally flirty and giggly and like maybe touch his leg or his ear because that's all they want you to get tipsy for, to be more affectionate to them and to open up. Okay. If you're already like that, they don't care if you drink. 
if you're uptight and they try to make you drink, it's because you're uptight. If you don't drink and you're flirty and fun, they're not going to care. You're saving them money. Believe me, they don't care. If you're stuck up and just, they will, they're going to try to make you drink because it loosens you up. So be already like that. And they're not even going to notice if you don't drink or care. Um, I'm hitting my bong now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, y'all know how I feel about weed. I, I'm not a fan of weed, okay? If you are, great, but I'm not. <laughs> Where are you from? I'm from Houston, Texas, baby. Why do men look but not approach? You're unapproachable. Either you're intimidating, you, you're out of their league, they're married or they can't afford to date or you're not their type. They might like some features on you, but other features are keeping them from walking over. That's usually what it is. They might like your eyes. They might think you're pretty, but if you're not their type, they're not coming over. If you are exactly what they want, they're making a beeline to you quick. Okay. So that's what you got to keep in mind. Also, even if they're married, they will still come if you are what they like. So that's why I tell ladies to dress for men, dress to get man's attention, not what you like, but will will make them cross a room for you. Wear your hair the way men like so that they will cross the room to approach you. Smell good, look good, skin soft, feminine. That's what they cross the room for. You might look good, but be in a pair of pants that make you look crazy. You might look good, but might have on some trendy outfit that looks trashy. You might look good, but you got on a see-through shirt and tight jeans and wedge heels, and that doesn't fit into their class zone. So they're not coming. OK, but you might look good up here, but this is all wrong. Classy. Feminine. Inviting. Smiling. will get them to cross a room. How do you get your husband to ask you to stop working? They're not going to ask you to stop working. You got to tell them you're not working no more. OK. I told y'all about the boss harassing you. Tell them you being sexually harassed every day at work. Mm -hmm. Never stop smoking. It deals with the nonsense of people. <laughs> mm -hmm. Just to be clear, wedges aren't a thing anymore, right? The only time I would wear wedges... Is during the daytime in the spring or summer when I am walking and I want to look cute and comfortable, not on a date, unless he, they're taking me to like brunch and we're sitting outside on the patio. There's an appropriate time for wedges and it's the, the, the espadrille wedges is the only type I wear. I don't wear like leather wedges like that because I don't like them. Um, so daytime, spring, outside, brunch, lunch, day, date, nighttime, you need heels. If you're big and you can't wear heels, then you need to get stacked heels. You know what I'm saying? The more sturdy looking heels, but you wedges are not classy on dates at night espadrilles espadrille wedges you know with the straw look around it the little rope look is good for daytime with cute sundresses or skirts or the nautical look but not for any type of formal or dinner date they should not be worn after sunset unless you're at the beach in a sundress on vacation or something like that. That's my only time that I would ever wear them because to me, it looks trashy. Okay. 
I'm sorry if y'all are like that love wedges, but it just, it me, to me, when I see somebody wearing wedges, you know what I think? She's too fat to wear heels. She knows she's going to fall and bust her head, but she don't know about stacked heels or wooden stacked heels or whatever. You don't know about that. You don't know about kitten heels either or her foot too fat to fit in a heel. Go get you some wide shoes. You know what I'm saying? That's what I think. That's what most people think when they see you trying to pull off some wedges in a dress and it's nighttime. Unless you're skinny and they're those platform wedges that are about this high, then you look like you shop at Fashion Nova and you're about 20 years old and you're in the club. Okay? But they're not classy. <laughs> what do you do with an over-emotional boyfriend? Dump him. Shira, is dresses and sandals okay for summer? If you're if you're on a date outside or on a patio, but not to like if if they're taking you to nice places with valet parking, no heels. You can wear strappy heels with your toes out, sandal heels. You know, y'all need to learn how to walk in heels. I'm sorry, that's feminine. <laughs> Give me general rules how to approach men. You don't approach men. You don't. If they're not approaching you, you're not for them. They not. They don't like you. They, you're not their type. Don't approach men. You can walk by them, smile at them, but do not approach. If you do, if you do, make sure it's short term and you have a goal of getting money. But if you're trying to start a long-term anything, do not approach men. It is, it's ghetto. It's class. It's classless to approach men unless you just try to get their money, get in and get out. You know what I'm saying? What do you wear if you have a bit of a belly and really skinny legs and stretch marks all over your body? A wrap dress and a girdle, a waist slimmer, a wrap dress with long sleeves and some heels. Okay. I am not messing up my back in nobody's heels. Okay. <laughs> they make like inserts in your heels now that help your back and your feet. Go to Dr. Scholl's um, section of the store. <laughs> They even make heels that are good for your back, like in some uh, shoe stores. They do. <laughs> this is funny today. It's too many pics. Okay, I think it's going too fast. Too many pics. Pick me with low self-esteem on here. Look, I am not going back on not wearing heels. If you can't wear heels, you are you can't be super feminine. Okay. Get, get figure out how to wear some heels. I don't care. You can sit down on a bar stool in the spot where you go. You don't have to sit there and walk in heels. You just put them on your feet. Okay. Keep some flip-flops or some flats in your car. When you get in, take them off. Heels are not for long-term standing or walking. They're for looks. They're simply aesthetic. Okay. Men have fantasies about heels. Makes your leg look slimmer and longer and more muscular. When you wear flats, it makes you look flat footed. It makes your feet look bigger and you can't even walk sexy in flats. Okay. So you're going to be sitting here wearing wedges and flats, but other women are walking by with their heels on and guess where that man is going to look at that woman in heels. Ooh. Then you're going to look at your duck feet and be like, You ever wear heels? Do you ever wear heels? I think heels are so sexy. You would look good in some heels. That's what they gonna tell you. Go get you some heels. Okay. So you're gonna be sitting here looking crazy, you know, with your flat feet, sitting in um, you know, whatever. 
And he's going to be looking at that chick walking and buying heels. So learn to walk in them. I don't care. You know, I, I've been walking in heels since I could fit my mama's shoes when I was in third grade. I'm like, I knew how, I, I mean, I might not be the sexiest walking heel woman, but I know how to walk in them without falling over. <laughs> <laughs> or I will put them, I will put some flats in my car and put some heels on and then switch them out when I leave wherever I'm going. He is six foot two tall for heels. Mm. When I wear heels, I like, especially if I wear tall heels, I'm over six foot easily. But I say do kitten heels or just wear your heels. Shoot. Someone's going to be taller than you. Wear three inch heels. They got three inch heels. Or. Yes. If you have to wear any type of flat, they should be pointy, pointy flats, highly high end pointy flats. If you have to wear flats. They have to look fancy. They can't be them round ballet slippers or, you know, them wide loafer looking flats. Get you some pointy high end flats that look nice if you're going to put flats on your feet for a date. But I'm telling you, you be better off wearing heels and sitting down. If you are six foot and wearing heels, sit, sit your butt down and cross your legs and let your heels show, you know, uh, there's a lot of tall men out there, though. Like, there's a lot of tall dudes. Is it superficial to want a tall man if you are tall and wear heels? I'm 5'8". Um, it's not superficial, but if it doesn't bother them or you and he has money, it doesn't matter. <laughs> like, James is, what, 5'11 and a half? So when I wear heels, I'm taller than James. But he don't care. <laughs> they know it's the heels. Um, Tory Burch has really nice ones, but they're only for work, in my opinion. Yes, I will only wear them when I'm walking in the mall or something like that. When I need some comfortable, cute shoes. I have a nice pair of Jimmy Choo kittens and I always get compliments on them. Yeah. I'm 5'9 and I'm always begged to wear heels because men like heels. Okay. So learn, learn to do that. That's a very feminine thing. Also your purse. I know a lot of ladies carry these giant purses or these crossbody purses. I know that's for walking around the mall. That's for when you got your kids and all this crap that you need to put in your purse. But when you're on a date, get you a uh, appropriate purse. It could be a clutch or a smaller purse or something dainty that's not going to overpower you. You know, you don't want your purse to be like this big and then you have on a cute dress and some heels. You need a, a smaller purse. Mm -hmm. That kind of goes with your outfit. Okay. Oh, Lord, you getting me all the way together. Yes. Keep heels in your trunk. Keep a pair of heels in your trunk because you never know when someone's going to invite you somewhere on the on the go. And you might have on something cute for the daytime, but then your shoes are inappropriate for wherever they're asking you to go. So keep some black heels or in your trunk or with you when you're out and about. That way you can just switch it up real quick. Black goes with anything or nude, nude or black heels. Keep them in your trunk, pop them on. That way you don't have to go all the way home and change clothes. Or if you got the money, go buy some. No white heels. <laughs> yes. I don't, I don't like white heels unless it's like a fashion statement and they're pointy and you're wearing them to pop and they're a fashion statement in a contrast. But other than that, I don't suggest white heels on a regular basis because they get dirty too quick unless it's summertime and you, they're a statement piece. 
Um, like for example, you guys, if y'all want good style, y'all get in style magazine. I should be getting paid to advertise this. If you don't understand what ladylike style is versus trashy style, get you an in style magazine. They're not gonna have any type of fashion nova up in here, I promise you. Okay. And you they'll show you like dupes or less expensive versions of the designer outfits. Um and things like that what's in style so if you see that in the store you can grab it um if you want to be on trend but not trashy they'll show you like different things to wear like daytime this is cute uh, for like lunch or brunch but you don't wear that at night <laughs> and they have like evening things like this um like the heels and just look in magazines or go online to a magazine website. Don't go on Instagram looking for fashion advice. Look in magazines. This is more classy. Okay. Or what magazine websites because Instagram models, you know, they're beautiful. They're, you know, a lot of them are flawless, but a lot of the times, you know, they're not dressing super feminine or classy, but dressing for likes and attention. So it's very different. Okay. You don't want to emulate that. You want to emulate class and femininity and not, you know, desperate for attention. Um, see everything, every curve on my body and type thing. Okay. Leave something to the imagination. Um, things like that. So you want to be more feminine and less, you know, trendy or flirty. Um, but yes, you can kind of get a feel for what and how how the fit should look. You go to a high end magazine; they're going to show you how the fit should fit you. If you've got the same dress and it's skin tight on you, go a size up. It doesn't matter if that's not your size. It's, it's about how it looks on you. You know, you might be a you know an eight or a seven, but you might need to go up a size for it to fit right. Okay. Um, so don't worry about the size, make sure it fits and looks right. Um, I'm looking at this. You will never see celebrities or anyone out in the evening that much, you know, dressed up or at any type of gala or premiere or anything with wedges on unless it's Lady Gaga last decade okay um I used to be an insta chick oh you did okay well I think everyone thought that that was what you were supposed to do at one point because it was so popular but Is this that girl from Glee? Oh, Gabrielle Union has a line at New York and Company. See this dress? I think um, this dress is kind of cute, but um, like on any figure, it's like a wrap dress and it comes down here. You can be overweight or skinny and it will still look good on you. That silhouette. You know, and see how loose the clothes are fitting. They're not supposed to be skin tight. It looks classy versus trashy. <laughs> and let's see. See over here on this page. If you're going to wear flats or any type of heel with pants, make sure they're pointy. Pointy is classy. Always do the pointy heel. It looks more elegant and, and uh, expensive. Okay. Go for pointy. Unless you have open toe, then it's different. Oh, they got a whole page of Beyonce. Ooh, Ooh I like that dress. They got a whole page of Beyonce clothes. My favorite dress on all of this, if I had to wear one, 
Okay, there's two of them that I really like. This, this Balmain and this black dress. These two, I would definitely, that is hot. This green one is cute too. This green one, but I don't have, mm -mm, I couldn't pull that off. But this green one, yes. Ooh, this white one. Like, okay, I see a lot of them. But it's really cute. Um, but they have stylists, so that's, uh, <laughs> that's one thing they could dress because they have stylists helping them. You got to be your own stylist these days and get all the help you can get. Um, oh, there's Carrie Washington right now. The face. She has on green eyeshadow, dark green eyeshadow, and gold. So, yeah, get your inspiration out of fashion magazines versus Instagram, and you'll be better off, I think. Um, um, Hair is an accessory, yes. Tom Ford fragrances are the best, yes. I notice that when I dress classy and wear florals and bright feminine colors, men tend to approach me in a more respectful manner versus when I wear Fashion Nova, yes. I feel like a Dusty. This session is too real today. Uh -huh. No, you know what? A lot of women, let me tell y'all one thing that I have noticed about a lot of women. They want the type of men that very feminine women can get easily. And they ask the certain questions. Well, how can I get him to come over to me? How come men don't approach? This is the main reason. Men love feminine women. The more feminine you are, the more you will be approached. The more feminine colors you wear, the better you smell, the softer you talk, the, you know, the, the more you smile, you're wearing dresses. That is what attracts them. They are a man. They wear pants. They talk deep. They talk loud. They're egotistical. They don't want to be attracted to the same type of woman. They want the opposite. They want something soft and subtle and flirty. And uh, they want a flower. They don't want a weed. They don't want an aloe vera plant. They want a flower. If you're not a flower, why would they come to pick you? You know, if, if <laughs> you know what I mean? They're not, kids don't run to cactuses. Kids don't run to weeds. Kids don't run to, um, you know, bushes to pick. They run to flowers. Because why? Because they're pretty and soft looking, pretty, soft looking, beautiful. They want to pick it up and take it home. Okay. Be a flower. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of you girls wear black and dark colors when you go out. You're not going to stand out. You're not going to look super feminine. They're going to be like, I mean, you could, but you you get more attention in a feminine color. A nice pink, a coral, even a green, you know, a, a light green or an emerald green. You could do uh, gold, anything but gray, black and brown. Mm hmm. And, you know, red, yes. So make sure you're looking feminine and they will come to you. If you got on black, looking rigid, masculine, you got a masculine hairdo. If you're too much, if you're too bold, they're not coming. You got to be soft and feminine. 
change if you wear gray and black every day put some pink with it put some pretty feminine colors peach wear lighter colors it's springtime okay i like black in the fall that's when it's appropriate but i like to also pair it with lighter colors like like light scarves light light, light shirts and things like that or light jewelry or makeup, but it is springtime now. Men want to see dresses. Men want to see legs. Men want to see skin. Men want to see flowers, and that's what you are to them. You can't, a red rose in your hair, that might be too much. Uh, maybe. It, it just, if you're on tropical vacation, but it might be a little bit too much. That was in a couple years ago, but now it's kind of died down. Maybe a sparkly, um, uh, maybe a sparkly floral, like bobby pin. Um, so please, if you're not getting the attention you think you need, you're too masculine looking. Make yourself more feminine and stop cursing. That's number one, please. Um, wear more skirts and dresses. Yes, that, that, yes. Uh, and also, <laughs> lingerie under your clothes make you walk sexier feel sexier, have that confidence as well. So get you some cute lingerie. They might not be able to see it, but you're going to feel sexy, which is going to come off very feminine, you know? And piercings, like if you got a if you got a bunch of stuff all over you, take that stuff out. If you got a bunch of tattoos all over you, cover it up, cover it up. Okay, if you're gonna show skin or wear something over it. Cover some tattoos up, you know, like I have a tattoo right here, but I can cover this like this. Like you don't see this. Or if I'm going to wear something open, I can put some foundation on this and you won't even know I have a tattoo. Because if you're in a five star restaurant, you have on a spaghetti strap or a cute sundress and then you got a big old picture here of whatever, you know. Ride or die and uh, Tweety Bird and whatever you got all it's it's like distracting and they're gonna be like this is the last time we ever going out that is somebody said Tupac <laughs> I have tattoos okay I got one here and this one or these three these three and one on my arm and I don't show it when I'm out in public so a biggie a rose. <laughs> So this can be covered like, boop, you don't even know I have a tattoo. Or I could cover it up in about two seconds with some foundation and some concealer. I love my tattoos. It's all a matter of how you style yourself. You can still have an elevated look with tattoos. Yes, but still, if you're like, what if you're invited to a gala? Are you going to, sh and you're around a bunch of rich, high class people, they're going to automatically put you in a lower class because you have certain tattoos. I'm just saying that's just how it is. When you go to those type of events, when you go to five-star restaurants, when you go out and you're trying to secure a man with money, cover it up, cover it up. You might like it, but they don't. Okay. And that's just the truth. They don't like it. They don't like it. They will say it's okay because they want to sleep with you, but you're not going to be wifey because they don't want, like, they're just imagining you on your wedding day with a beautiful wedding dress on and Tupac sitting up on your shoulder, okay? Or a rose that says something, some quote in cursive that you can't even read because it's faded and it's don't go good with your skin tone. And then you got a bunch of tattoos on your neck. What are y'all's wedding pictures going to look like? How's he going to introduce you to his mama? Oh, this is my date. This is my fiance. Yeah, she got a tattoo of Biggie and Tupac. And, but I love her. 
He's not taking you home. Cover it up. Get it removed. Do something. And I'm not, unless he is rich and has tattoos himself and likes them. But very rarely are you going to find a sugar daddy who's older, who likes all that crap on you. And believe me, I have tattoos. I mean, not that many, not that big, but I cover my stuff up when I'm, when I'm in a certain area, in a certain place, because they will treat you different. And I know tattoos are everywhere now, but still the very highly classy people don't get them all up in here. You know, if they're going to get one, it's going to be hit somewhere else or dainty or super small somewhere else. <laughs> Someone said wedding pictures are going to look like a jail portrait. That's true. Yeah, Black China was a stripper. OK, that's different. Y'all are not black China. <laughs> I love my tattoos too, but I'm not finna show them off like, and then get, get treated like, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. When I met James, I didn't have any tattoos at all. Um, I got them on my 33rd birthday, actually. And my first tattoo I got on my 33rd birthday because I was like, I'm 33. Let me do something crazy. I was in rebellious mood. So. Overly classy people secretly dislike themselves. Yes, they might, but still. That's their lifestyle and they have to adhere to it. You know, mm hmm. You have tattoos, but they're strategically placed and you would never know. See? Um, yes. If you get laser removed tattoos. Yeah. I feel like if you've already got them, figure out how you can cover them up. If you wear things that show them off, if you're trying to date up, especially if you're trying to date other races, cover that up. You know, just because uh, your Dusty liked it doesn't mean the CEO of a corporate comp corporation is, I mean, a corporate uh, business is going to like it. Okay. <laughs> Shira, what about multiple piercing in my ears? Put in, don't wear all of that stuff or Maybe you can find uh, one of those earrings that go up and cover the holes, you know, like an ear jewelry thing. But don't wear all that stuff. And if you don't have anything yet, um, don't get anything. You don't need it. It's it's not going. It's going to be fun now. It's trendy and edgy now. But when you get older, it's not. You just look crazy. Like, think about it. If you get all that stuff done, all them tattoos, what are you going to look like at 50 years old? All of, the, all of you guys who have those big old tattoos everywhere, what are y'all going to look like at 50? You know. <clears throat> Imagine Black China at 50. Yeah. Um, but let's just, have you ever seen a billionaire or a millionaire that's not a rapper with a woman with a bunch of tattoos all up in here? Or a Kardashian? Oh, Rob, don't count. No, you don't because they don't like it. Wealthy men don't like it. They like classy chicks without all that. You know, um, even this is too much. This look trashy. When I got it, I was being rebellious, but I, I like it. And I can cover it. And it's not all up in here or on my boobs, you know. So and I got it after I was married, not before, but after. Many years after. And he paid for it. So, you know, it was OK. So, you know. 
I'm not trying to bash anyone or down anyone, but it's not feminine either. It's very masculine. Tattoos are very masculine. They're not feminine at all. Like in the old days, only men got tattoos. Sailors, you know, stuff like that will get tattoos and they weren't feminine. Women didn't start getting tattoos until like, what, the 60s and 70s? Whatever, when they were rebelling. I can do what, you, I can do what a man do. So, yeah, they're not very feminine. And if you're going to get some, cover it up. Be able to cover it or hide it. Someone told me women masculinity was okay because they want to be the woman. They want you to pay and go 50-50. They want you to pay half the bills. It's okay because they don't want to work as hard. They want you to do half the work. <laughs> And look, you know, tattoos are tribal, but in America, a lot of people were just getting them in the military. Um, as you know, mostly that's how it started in America, except for you know the natives who did have them for tribal reasons. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Spray tan versus real tan. Don't know nothing about that. Real tan. Um, I think if it looks fake, they're gonna know. But if you get real tans, you're gonna get leathery. So <laughs> try to find something that looks natural, I guess. Have I ever tried the IV Beauty Drip? No, never tried that. Spray tans look too orange. Yes. Um, I think everyone should just embrace their own complexion. Just make sure your skin is even. Uh, no orange tans. Um, I have my kid's name tattooed on me. I have Michael Jackson tattooed on me. <laughs> Yes, I did. Have y'all ever seen my MJ tattoo? <laughs> you do? I sure do. You've been hit by choo -choo. You've been struck by a smooth baby do, 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 do. See? That's the only man I will ever get tattooed on me. Michael Jackson, yes. Because <laughs> his eyebrow was on fleek. Look, his eyebrow look better than mine. <laughs> so, yes, got that MJ going. <sighs> He's with me always. So, uh, but I ain't got it right here. You know what I'm saying? I got it high up to where if I wear like sleeves, I, if I wear sleeveless, yeah, you can see it. But if I wear regular sleeves, it, it's right above that. See, y'all, I got tattoos and I'm still talking trash. Yes. I'm I'm glad I got it after I was married and it wasn't on my wedding pictures. <laughs> or I would have covered it up, seriously, or wore a long sleeve dress. Um. Tips on how to be sexually appealing. Wear, um, wear something that shows a little skin, but not too much. Because the mystery is the part that is sexually appealing. The mystery. If you're showing everything, they're just going to be horny and want to hurry up and sleep with you. If it's mysterious yet sexy, they want to... They want you to seduce them. So you're going to wear, if you're going to show cleavage, then make your dress a little longer so that it goes to your knees or below your knees. And if you're going to show leg, cover this up. Um, make sure your skin looks soft. Make sure you smell good. Make sure your hair is how they like it or what men are attracted to. Men like long hair. Don't wear, like, I think Mickey did a video on 
Not every like you can't be Beyonce. You know, not everybody can pull off certain hair colors. So stick to something that is complimentary to you. Wear a slit dress. <laughs> yeah. Show a little bit of leg. Um, eyes, play up your eyes. Men like to look into your eyes and play up your eyes. But don't wear so much like crap that you have crap in your eyes. Like don't wear so much eye makeup that you start getting this stuff right here and uh, it just looks fake to look at. Do something a little bit subtle when you're on a date. You know, what about online dating? How do you know who has the money? The older they are, the better job they have. And look what they look like in their pictures. If if their picture looks like they only wear a suit when they get invited to weddings, you can you can tell if they're at a wedding or if they're at work, if it's a work picture, if it's a business picture. Usually men will pose with their nice cars or on a boat. Those look for that. Look for men who are doing leisure activities, not fishing, but yachting. You know, not wearing a a, a suit that is ill-fitted that they probably rented or bought off the rack at a wedding with an ugly tie on. Look for real nice tailored fitting suits. Look for men who look like their picture is off of a business ad or something like that. Look for men who have nice cars in the background or are on a yacht, not on a cruise, but on a yacht. Look for men who look like they're not working in the middle of the day. Okay, expensive hobbies. Yes, like golfing, boating. Um, look for the area of town that they live in. Okay, look for, only go for certain zip codes that are rich. Um, can you get away with not posting a pictures on online dating? Um, no, because you can, but you're not going to get any hits. You're going to barely get anything. Mm. Do I wear Lily Pulitzer? Yes, I do. I have a bunch of Lily Pulitzer. I have like about seven or eight dresses, a um, couple of purses, keychains. I got a, yeah, it's very popular in Southern states, especially in summer and fall. I mean, summer and, and spring. Um, Dusty always take pictures with their raggedy cars. Okay. This will not be him showing off his car, but him and the cars in the background. And he's not even really trying to show it. He's just like, um, it's not going to be in a parking lot, but in his, in front of his house, most likely. <laughs> okay. I've seen people who pose by other people's cars and, and put that on. Okay. Don't, if the car is too ghetto and looks like, they put a lot of money into the car to make it look flashy. They broke. Um, don't look for obvious cars like Mercedes or BMW or, you know, yeah, Porsche is good. Corvettes, no. Audi, yes. Audi is, is nice. Um, a lot of men, wealthier men are starting to buy Audi. Audi. You know, the ones with the circles. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. So, Jaguar. Mm -hmm. They could be rented, yes, but usually they're not. If the guy's old, old dudes, they don't really rent cars. They got good credit. Okay. Um. Are lastic lash extensions better? I don't know. I've never had lash extensions, so I don't know if they're better. I have not feeling very approached as I used to be three years ago. I'm 23 and people generally say I am beautiful. I see men with women that aren't more beautiful than me. Um, are you feminine though? And are you in the right area? Mm-hmm.
Ladies also screen for mental. <laughs> they look more natural. Um, how do a rich woman post pics and find someone richer? Play poor. Yeah. Just look cute. They don't care how much money you have. Just look cute and don't have more money than them. My my husband drives an Audi. <laughs> he used to have a Mercedes and BMW, and he said he liked the Audi better too. Um, he has the convertible. He think he all you know. He think he he think he done made it. <laughs> mm. Hey, so you saw the bonnet at the store? Mom yelled, call Shira. Ha, ha, ha. Yep. My husband just bought the new BMW X2. Yeah. Well, when you, when you have, you can, you know, when you make money, you can try every car out that you like. <laughs> You just keep going like, oh, I want to try this type of car. Okay, now I've had it. Let me try this type. Okay, this is this is what's in now. Let me drive this. So you kind of got, you can do whatever you like. You can trade it in, get you a nice, a different car, trade it in again, get you another car. You can have two cars. <laughs> Only the unworthy are intimidated by beautiful women. And a lot of men won't approach you because they feel like they're going to have to do a lot to impress you and they don't like working. A man that can approach a beautiful woman does not want her to be the center of attention. They want to be the, the one to get all the attention. They want the one they want to be spoiled by a woman. So they're not going to come come to you if they know they're going to have to prove themselves to you. Only men that do that are men that can afford it and who want their status to look higher. They will only cross the room for a beautiful woman if they can afford you and you make them look better. Other men who can't really afford you and they want to be the center of attention in the relationship and get the A star plus treatment. They're only going to go for the average women who are lucky to have them. And going to do whatever they ask in bed, going to do whatever, not expect any expensive gifts and just be happy to be with them. OK, so you should be happy that certain men aren't crossing the room for you. If you know you look good, that means they know they can't give you what you need. They want it. They want what you want. The same thing. They want to be treated special. They want to be the prize in the relationship and they see you as the prize. So they are definitely not going to be the prize. So they will go for uglier pick me chicks that will validate them and treat them special. And they don't have to work as hard. OK, now a man with money, they don't want the pick me average chick because then what if they what if they work their whole life for? Why do they drive nice cars? You know? You can be beautiful and still that man has money. You gonna, He might get whatever he wants in bed from a beautiful woman. You don't have to go for the pick me. So go to the nicer areas only. Stop hanging out in average places if you want men to come to you if you are beautiful. Beautiful women hang out in nice areas. They don't hang out in trashy areas where their beauty is going to be exploited. They hang out in nice areas where people can afford to be with them, to please them, to pay for things for them, to accommodate them. They're not going to be in a place where everybody's like lying to them, you know, pretending to have money. Go to the place where you know people have money, where you know, you know. A feminine woman is never afraid to go out alone. She is confident within herself to go out alone, you know? <sighs> How do I come become more alluring? Your outward appearance. You just have to dress very seductive or feminine, but not slutty. Make sure your clothes fit where... 
um, perfume, make sure your hair is how men like it, longer, uh, speak softly, don't curse, smile. You know, I, I can't, you know, tell you enough. Smiling will totally change your, your look. It will make you look younger, nicer, and, and more attractive. Mm -hmm. You know, heels, dresses, skirts, get rid of, like, I only wear pants when I'm running errands and it's super cold. Or when I have a certain look that I'm going for, but never on a date, never out do I wear pants. Never going out like for an evening. I never wear pants doing that. I mean, when I was younger, like in my 20s and I was in clubs and, you know, I had some leather pants on or some cute jeans and heels and a top because I was dancing. And it was like the, the, the 90s and stuff. Yes. But now I'm a little older and, and I want to pull off the classy look. And the more feminine look and get treated like a lady versus someone just to sleep with being taken more seriously. You wear the feminine classy clothing. <laughs> yeah, the leather pants was it in in the 90s, weren't they? Long curly hair. OK, not if you want to attract certain type of men, men, most men do not like curly hair. And that's just how it is. They like long Loose waves or straight, like curly hair is too big. It's too much. It's like it takes away from your natural, your beauty. If you spent an hour in the mirror to do your makeup or whatever, and then you have this massive curly curliness going on, they're not going to see none of this. All they're going to see is this. You know, all the, it's all they're going to see, the hair. No braids, no braids. No braids. This is all they're going to see. All they're going to see is your hair. They're not going to be focused on you. Okay. So the hair should be simple and sleek to get the attention of men who want classy look. Okay. If you're trying to have braids and big curls, you know, that's more for dusties. They like that. Okay. Men with money want you to fit into their environment and big curls and braids don't fit in. <clears throat> okay. There. I, that's just how it is. The women that get the most attention and the most wealth have the straight. Yeah, they do. The straight wig, the straight weave, whatever. That's what they got. Just going by numbers. Mm -hmm. How do you wear dresses? Just like you wear any other clothes. Just put them on. Make sure they fit. Try them on before you buy them. Like you can go online and look up best dresses for your body type. And look for that in the store. Mm-hmm. Okay, I wear I live in Michigan, it's too cold. Okay, wear longer dresses or skirts with you know tights and you know boots or something or heels or whatever. But it's not cold now. I mean in the summer it's not cold. Whenever you can wear them, wear them. And just think about it. If everyone has on pants and you come in there with a skirt, even when it's cold, but you can you can have on tights or whatever, or a coat and then take your coat off like a trench coat and you have on a dress, you're going to get all that attention. Mm. How do you do your hair at the gym? I put in a ponytail. <clears throat> Females always make the first move like smiling or stare. Yeah. It's not really a move. It's an invite. Like it's okay to come over to me. Mm hmm. What's the best time to go out alone into a rich area? Mm, on the weekdays, maybe happy hour or dinner time. Brunch on the weekends. Brunch. Um, some breakfast. If you want to find an old person with some money, go to nice breakfast places early in the morning. Because, you know, old people wake up early. <laughs> You have long natural hair. How to keep your hair healthy if you straighten it or flat iron it? Put a wig on. 
just like I do. Um, I know people are proud of their hair. It's, it's long. It's, it's natural. Yes. I don't want to damage it. Of course you don't. That's why you buy a wig. That way, when you're done with that date, you can take it right on off and go back to who you are. You know, I'm wearing a wig right now. Yes. And when I'm done, I'll take it right off. I'm, well, this is my hair, and then this is the wig back here. You see? You can do a half wig. You can get a wig the same texture as your hair. Pull some out in the front, make it a half wig, and look natural. But you don't have to do all of that. Like, you doing that, that's your choice. Men don't care, especially, you know, if you're, try if you're trying to date any man, they don't care. They don't care if it's a wig anymore, you know, unless, you know, unless they're trying to... I mean, most men don't ask what type of what, what's that in your head unless, you know, they're black and they want to have kids with certain hair texture, you know, <clears throat> or they're afraid you're going to ask them to pay for your wig or weaves one day. So if your hair looks good, natural, you got a long, flat ironed wig that you don't have to damage your hair with, wear that. How do I feel about Chloe's situation? <clears throat> I like to me, they're not ever gonna have good luck with me. <laughs> okay. The type of men that they like are the type of men that cheat. So what do you expect? <clears throat> If you use certain products and you straighten your hair, it'll be healthy. Yeah, someone says they have natural hair and they straighten it. I straighten mine. But you can use like the keratin spray, the thermal spray, and then straighten it with a ceramic iron. Keep the ends trimmed. <laughs> Get some clip-in extensions, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> what's the most expensive thing a man has given you? A house? How you doing? <laughs> house, then car, then kids, because them things are expensive. <laughs> Life insurance, ring, <clears throat> do you like Marlo? I don't watch Real Housewives of Atlanta. I'm so sorry. Have I ever thought about being a comedian? No. Mm -hmm. Prenup, no prenup. I'm a Pisces. We don't do prenups. <laughs> Unless they benefit us. Um, they, act, they dress classy, but act a certain type of way. That's for entertainment, right? On TV. They pay them to act ratchet and stuff like that. You know. <laughs> How do you style curly hair? Straighten it. If you want that money, straighten it out. Most Pisces women are desperate, glad to see you're not. I've never met a desperate Pisces in my life. I don't know. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but we find ratchetness okay. That's the messed up part. Yeah, because it's entertaining, but you don't see them, you don't see those women with certain type of men either. You only see them with the men that's cheating on them and lying to them and ratchet themselves, you know. Mm -hmm. They may not be considered high end, but they're, they rock. Oh, I don't know. Um, hmm. Yeah, there's some Pisces girls who are super emotional. They're probably mostly young or 
not in control of their emotions. But I feel like the more you learn, the more you understand that being in control of your emotions is powerful. And it helps you make better decisions and it takes you to better places. So once they've figured that out, they won't be like that anymore. But someone has to tell them or they have to figure it out themselves. But if they don't figure it out and they continue, then that is one of the the life lessons that they're supposed to learn. And they'll keep repeating the same thing until they learn it. So. mm -hmm. If you are a Leo, you are already halfway there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, take care of their... Of the, so, yeah, just be more feminine, you know. You must have an act. You must have an act. You must appear feminine. You must look feminine. You must talk feminine, act feminine, walk feminine if you want to attract a masculine type man who will provide. Men will provide more for a feminine woman than a masculine woman. Because first of all, they see you as vulnerable, dainty, helpless. They want to help you. They want to prove their masculinity. They want their masculinity to contract contrast with your feminine. You know, they don't they know you're not going to challenge them or correct them in public. So they will take you more places, introduce you to more people. They know their men friend, their male friends and family will like you straight up. They're less likely to see ulterior motives. <laughs> They're more likely to see you as honest. Even if you ain't. They're more likely to see you as someone that they want to help. Or be there for. Or um, be with so that they can help and protect you. You know what I'm saying? Because anyone could just take advantage of you because you're so nice and you're so happy and you're smiling and anyone can just approach you because you're so approachable. So they're going to want to be with you more. They're less likely to want to go out alone or let you go out alone because you're so feminine. You're just going to attract anything. Especially if you hang out in nice places. Oh, you can't go out by yourself. You're too attractive. And you're too feminine. Men are going to swarm you. So they're more likely to take you out more if you want to go out and not say, oh, go hang out with your girls. I'm going to go hang out with my boys. They're less likely to uh, be like tell you to do stuff or go to the grocery store at night because you're so feminine and dainty and approachable. They're not sending you nowhere at night. They're, they're going to go with you or they're going to go run the errand for you. They're not, they're less likely to say, Oh, you have to work. If you're just this alluring, super feminine lady that they know any male boss will be attracted to. And try to get it. They'll be like, oh, no, you don't have to work, baby. I'll take care of you. Or you can work from home. Find you an online job. It doesn't have to pay much. Just do whatever you want to do. You know, whatever. Figure out what you want to do. Start your own business. They'll be more likely to do that than say, oh, no, you got to go to work. You know? They'll be more likely to go get a second job so you don't have to deal with your boss who's chasing you around the desk and trying to sleep with you on the lunch break. Okay? So... Feminine women can get away with more. Feminine women can stay home. Feminine women can pretty much get a man to do whatever they need them to do. Masculine women can't because the man think you can handle it. If you play dumb, play feminine, I can't do that. I don't know how to work this. Uh -huh. They'll do everything for you. And they'll feel good about doing it because that makes them feel more masculine and intelligent and they can impress you all at the same time. 
So don't be that independent. I don't need no man. I can do it myself. I know what I'm doing. You should do it this way instead. It's better type woman. Because you are not going to get anything out of that. But resentment. Someone says, I haven't worked. Oh, where's my phone? Oh, someone says, I haven't worked in five years. Yes, that's a good deal, you know. So a lot of ladies have issues with that, you know, standing down and acting a certain way. But it doesn't make you any less of a woman. It makes you more of a woman. Think about it. It makes you more feminine. And it's just an act. It's not real. I mean, we know women can do a lot of stuff, okay? We know we've done it. But that doesn't make it appealing to men, okay? Mm. Capricorn women are hard workers. My mom is. Yeah, you can be a hard feminine worker. Like you can you can put your like if you have an ultra feminine career, men are more likely to accept that versus a masculine or com competing career. You know, if you're a doctor, lawyer, whatever, whatever, that's competition. If you're a stylist, if you're a makeup artist, if you're a YouTuber, if you're this and that. It's less intimidating. Like, they don't take that seriously. That's, oh, that's women's stuff. <laughs> you know, even if you make a lot of money, they just think people are crazy and giving you money. And you're just lucky. It's not competition. Okay? So if you are very motivated, you know, get a feminine career. Get a feminine job. And it's less intimidating to men. <laughs> and you know if you own your own business they can't really tell what you're bringing home anyway so you can lie about that yes work smarter not harder that's why I said you know a lot of women don't like me because I say oh get money from a man and well what if I have my own money well save it you won't have it if you spend it Duh. I know, you know, save your money. Why spend, like, look him say, why spend mine when I can spend yours? I saw that video in the group today. Save your money. Invest your money. Buy some life insurance. Pay some, get some mutual funds. Buy some real estate and then spend his. You know what I mean? You're going to be a strong, independent woman and you got your own money, but where, what does your savings look like? What does your investment look like? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Work smarter, not harder. It don't matter if, because that's females' egos. Like once y'all get in a, a position, you turn just like a man. You get start getting that ego. Well, I need to let the world know how educated I am. I need to let the world know my position. I need to let the world know I'm a boss. And they're going to let you know that they need some money. Because you got it. <laughs> so I would rather be like, I ain't got it. I don't come uh on. -uh. I'm just a receptionist. I need to, I, I, I'm a receptionist. I'm a secretary. I'm a, an executive assistant. That's all, you know. Men don't care. They think that's sexy. Ooh. She got a nice phone voice, but you still look good. And you work in a nice building or an office, but you're not their competition. You're oppressed by them. It's your dream to marry up, right? And so there's so many women that just have to go and blurt out and tell the world what they do for a living. Nobody cares what you do for a living. They don't care. They don't. I'm sorry to tell you. They don't care how many degrees you have. They care more about what you look like and how good you make them feel. That's all that they care about. They don't care about 
all the hours you spent in school, that you have a, a doctorate. They don't care your position at the corporation. They don't care about your business. They don't care. You care. Your family cares, but they don't. It's boring. They're tuning it out. Save your breath. Okay. They're not impressed. They're intimidated and thinking about the receptionist that they were dating last week and were thinking and hoping they still got her number. Okay. <laughs> so. Mm. <laughs> Without disrespecting my sister in uniform, I'm never going back to working public safety. <laughs> okay, I working at an expensive hotel and businessmen do come and ask me where I'm from, what want to make me smile. Small talk, okay. They really couldn't care less about my job. They smile, feel powerful, and I and I smile back. Yeah. Mm hmm. So. Mm -hmm. That's that's what I'm talking about. So. If you want to be the powerful one in the relationship, then you probably gonna end up dating a dusty. If you want to be the lady and the woman in the relationship, then you can probably date a masculine provider. OK, but you can't have it both ways because eventually something's got to give out. Something's going to give out. They're going to find a more feminine woman than you that makes them feel more masculine than you. So you can't have it both ways. You got to just be. Even if you know the answer and he's doing stuff wrong and he's saying stuff wrong, you don't correct him. You don't offer suggestions. You accidentally let him find the answer. Okay. You be talking on the phone to your friend and you say something that you need him to hear, but say it loud. You go about it subtle. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So. Or you let it come from somewhere else. Like, yeah, James is working on this thing and he's, you know, he's working hard. He's, he's you know, he's really good at what, what? if you were doing it, what would you do? Oh, that's a good idea. Here, let me put you on speaker. You heard that, James? Wow, you're smart. Give the credit to someone else, even though it was your idea. Hey, okay, well, when I call, you say this, okay? Then you don't have to take credit for the idea. It came from a third party, which is perfectly fine. And he'll implement whatever the idea was, if he likes it, and if it makes more sense, which it probably does. And you don't have to walk around feeling like you helped him. Be smart, okay? Men like that you're not correcting them and treating them like a mother. They get to take full credit of all the stuff that you come up with and plant so they can figure it out. <laughs> if you need the credit, your ego is big. If you just want the result, plant it. <laughs> okay. So many women have bigger egos than men and they don't even realize it. Well, that was my idea. Well, I should, I came up with that. And, you know, we a power couple. We growing together. You know, no, he wants to be the man. And he wants to take credit for the ideas. So you plant them. In his mind, you still see him as a man. You know, my man would be pissed if he found out how much money I really have. I'm sure. <laughs> yep. What are appropriate things to talk about on the first date? Let him talk. Ask him questions that will take a long time to answer. Like, oh, you know, tell me about yourself. I love hearing about, you know, other people. It's asking questions that are going to have long answers so you don't have to talk too much. Where did you grow up? Ask him questions about his childhood. Where did you grow up? Where did you study in school? Stuff he likes to talk about himself. Where's your hobbies? <laughs> Some men like a little masculinity, though. I'm super feminine. But 
can be masculine too. I attract many guys. Yeah, but attraction is not the same thing though. You know what I mean? Attraction is attraction, uh, how you look. But if you act too masculine, they're going to opt for the more feminine. You know? The super masculine male men will. Mm -hmm. What type of guys do you attract though? Yeah, you know. Feminine gets the ring quick. Masculine, they got to think about that one. How is she going to be in the marriage? Is she going to be overpowering? Is she going to tell me what to do? Is she going to run my life? Is she going to take the, she going to wear the pants in the marriage? Is she going to let herself go? Because I see her in them raggedy clothes and that bonnet and no makeup more often now. You know, she going to get that uh, short haircut that women get after they get old and have a couple of kids. She going to do all of that. She going to stop wearing makeup. You know, if you're masculine, they're going to think about all that stuff before they propose to you. If you if you don't leave the house looking crazy, if you always got on cute clothes, makeup, hair done, and very concerned about those type of things, they know that's how you're going to be for the rest of your life. They don't have to worry about you <clears throat> not doing that anymore because that is who you are. So men will most likely marry someone like that versus someone who is uncomfortable in their femininity or uncomfortable in certain things. They're going to be like, I can tell that's not who she really is. You know, so I don't know if I want that permanently. <clears throat> They're like, I don't know if I want that permanently. Let me get this feminine, ultra feminine lady over here that's going to wear dresses. That's all she has in her wardrobe. And she has a few pair of jeans. She has lots of heels. She puts that makeup on every day. Her hair is always beautiful. Men turn to look as she walks by. She makes me look more powerful. That's who they're going to marry. Unless they're marrying you to build them up to go get that type of woman eventually. So... <clears throat> Is this for real? How come you just can't find a man who accepts you for you? Not all men love femininity. Yeah, not all men love femininity. The ones that want you to go 50-50 don't like it. The ones that want you to buy them expensive gifts and give them half <laughs> of your tax return, they don't like it. The ones that look better than you, they don't like it. The ones that <clears throat> pluck their eyebrows, they don't like it. The ones that want you to put them on a pedestal instead of the other way around, they don't like it. They want you to be the man so they can sit back and have an easy ride. So <clears throat> whenever you see a man who don't like feminine women, run. Run. They want you to do the work. Oh, baby, come fix my tire. You know how to change a tire. Get out of here. Oh, baby, I can't open this. Oh. You stronger than me. Oh, baby, what's this? Oh, you, you, you're a doctor. You're a lawyer. You should know that. <clears throat> Can you take me out to eat? Why? You know how to cook. <laughs> Why are you getting dressed up? <clears throat> Where are you going? You look fine with no makeup and no. I like you natural. That's the type of man. One that wants the upper end, the upper hand. That's the type of man that likes a masculine woman. So you can build him up and finish raising him. So he can go get the ultra feminine woman when he's older and can afford her. Do I suggest etiquette classes? <clears throat> you, you can take etiquette classes. I'm sure they have a bunch of YouTube videos you can take as, I mean, watch as well. 
but it's a good idea if you're going to be dating in the upper class segment of society. <laughs> so, someone says masculine women are good in bed. <laughs> that's that's all you want them for. Great. That's not the ones you know. That's the one that take charge, and then after a while, you like. Let me be the man, God. <laughs> that's the one, that's the type of women that beg for sex. Why you don't want to sleep with me no more? Oh, get off me. It's hot. You know. So. <clears throat> that's what I'm saying, you know. I have so many women who I've done consultations with. Well, how come he doesn't want to sleep with me anymore? How come he doesn't come on to me anymore? How come this, do you nag him? Yeah, do you tell him what to do? Yeah, you too masculine. You don't give him a chance to come on to you. You you like sex more than he does. You know, switch, switch uh, roles. That's most, a lot of people have those type of problems in their relationship and they don't even realize it's because they're too masculine. I don't know why he don't, I don't know what's wrong. He's just acting strange and don't, da, 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 because you're too masculine. Well, I try to tell him to do this, this. I say, are you his mom? Well, no. Well, then why are you telling him what to do? Because what he's doing is not working. And I was like, okay, well, you're emasculating him and he's probably out looking for a more feminine chick. So y'all got to stop doing that. I'm trying to tell you. It, when you get in the relationship, you still have to keep it feminine. <clears throat> so. <laughs> Shira, how do you suggest dealing with the need to pass gas with a new guy? Go to the restroom, excuse yourself and go do it in there where he don't hear you. Okay, it's not cute. What's your suggestion if we have a higher sex drive? Take care of it yourself? Mm hmm the Women who have a higher sex drive, the men will take advantage of you, okay? If they know you like it more than they do or like it a lot, they can take advantage of you. If you act like you don't need it, won't it? They're good, they will chase you more. So get rid of it. Figure it out. Do it on your own. <laughs> How do you handle the wig or weave situation when it's time to be intimate with the new guy? Leave it on. What you doing? Oh, hold on. Let me take it. Let me take off all my, my clothes and my wig. Like, uh, on, I'm going to get you sucker. No. Leave it on. Mm-hmm. How do you make your ex regret losing you? Get a richer man? Mm -hmm. um, what if he pulls it off? Put a thousand bobby pins in it, child. If you know you're finna do something, put a thousand bobby pins in it. <laughs> when he tug and it don't all the way come off, you can stop him. Like, no, don't, don't touch my hair. I don't want to mess it up. <laughs> Pit it down. Somebody says, you know, yeah. <laughs> How do you look good while spending the night? Wear 24 hour makeup. They make. <laughs> Get you some nice lingerie or nice, you know, negligee or whatever. Teddy, whatever. Mm -hmm. Yes. Everybody makes 24 hour makeup now. These eyebrows are 24 hours. Look, Psh. this lip, that ain't coming off. Kat Von D makes 24 hour makeup. And 
foundation. They, a lot of people do now. Okay. They make 24 hour, even the beauty supply store has 24 hour eyeliner and lip liner. It ain't coming off. <sighs> you met a guy. He's really good in bed. He got you to open up. Now it seems that I have the higher sex drive than him. Well, then you got to pull back. But see, that's why these guys in the comments can say, all she needed some good D. All she needed is to be, because y'all fall for that. Y'all can't do that. You lose power. <laughs> yeah, you can take up you could take care of your skin all you like, but still you know, if you have clear skin, you don't need to wear makeup to bed. Just put you some if you don't have perfect brows, fill in your brows. Maybe do some spot concealing and make yourself look natural. But you know, if he wants to see you without makeup, and you have good skin, if you don't, put some concealer on it. Make yourself look like you don't have on makeup. <laughs> That's all you can do. <laughs> That's what I would do. Like, if you know you look bad without makeup, and you look like a totally different person, and that man wants to see you without makeup, or wants you to spend the night, and you know he's going to leave you after he sees you with no makeup on, keep some makeup on. And tell him you ain't got none on. It's like, I don't have on makeup. You know, get the... Get the bare minerals, <laughs> do spot concealer, get that waterproof makeup that don't come off, do something. <laughs> Start going to dermatologists, yeah. You can get that treated if you have uh, a bad skin. Start, get fixed, drink a lot of water, go to dermatologists, get some medication. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You have to you have to upgrade yourself. You can't just stop just because makeup can cover it. Don't mean, you know, I would be fine leaving the house with no foundation on because I don't have a lot of issues with my my skin. But I like how it makes me look. So I do wear it, but I don't absolutely need it. Some women absolutely need it. If you absolutely need it. Go fix it. Go to the doctor, go to the dermatologist, go to the plastic surgeon, go to anybody that's going to help you fix what makeup is hiding if you eventually don't want to wear a lot of it anymore. You know what I'm saying? Um, so a lot of ladies who haven't worn makeup for most of their lives, their skin is different than women who's worn makeup a lot. Because women take better care of their skin when they wear makeup. And that's weird, right? Because you can't put makeup over dry, dead, wrinkly, unexfoliated skin and have it look good. So women who wear makeup really invest in skincare. Women who don't wear makeup, they get so used to looking the way that they look. They don't need extra. They just wash their face with whatever they washed it with in high school and slap on some moisturizer and call it a day. Then when they, <clears throat> then when they try to put on some makeup, it looks like it's sitting over some leather. So and they have more wrinkles because they don't they might not wear sunblock and a lot of the makeup has sunblock in it. Or they might not be putting night creams or eye creams on or things like that to make their face look younger because they're not really vain like that. Okay. So whenever women are new at wearing makeup, I always tell them go and get some exfoliate, exfoliating scrubs, um, wash your face, ex do the exfoliation twice a week until your skin starts to look soft and smooth. Foundation will look 10 times better on you. Okay. It won't look like it's sitting on your face anymore. Um, <clears throat> well, some people have really good skin naturally. Yes, if you exfoliate and do all that stuff, then no problem. But a lot of women don't. They just wake up, wash their face, put on a bonnet and, and walk. 
if you, <laughs> you have to, you know, really take care of your skin for makeup to look good on you. Like you can take two women, one with good skin and one with bad skin. And depending, and you know, the makeup is going to sit better on the one with the good skin. So take care of your skin. That's another feminine trait. Soft skin. Nice skin. Always working on your skin. Okay? Because men are attracted to healthy ladies. Health. That's why the glow and the highlight is so popular because it makes you look healthy like you have flawless skin. So work towards that if you don't have it. Cover it up with makeup until you can get it. Still wear makeup if you like, but you don't have to worry about caking it on before you go to bed with your new man. Or worried about what he thinks when you take it off, you know. A lot of ladies don't drink enough water. They're always drinking soda, iced tea, juice. Do you know that it's really... It's classy to drink water. I have met, I have talked to so many women that be like, I got to have a drink. I got to have something. I got to have some taste of my stuff. I got to have lemonade, juice, iced tea, something. You know, they just can't drink water. Like what's wrong with water? So drink more water. Come on, y'all. Don't be ghetto. <laughs> oh, this sparkling water. It's flavored water. That's better than juice, okay? If you can't just drink water, get you some sparkling water. This don't have no flavor. You know, no. Get you some water. If you go out to a restaurant, a five-star restaurant, and order you Dr. Pepper, that's ghetto. Don't do it. If you if you make lemonade with your water, don't do it. I know. <laughs> uh, at least let me get a water. It's a limo. Um, if you have to have flavor, get iced tea. Unsweet. Then you add your a sweetener. Don't add get that sweet tea. That's too many calories. And a lot of those drinks are too many calories, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> water with lemon. If you need flavor, add fresh fruit to your water. That's true. I'm a first year student. I'm thinking about transferring to a prestigious prestigious. University with medical and business school. There's highly da da da. Good husband. I didn't know. Go no. Why do y'all keep trying to get men in college? I don't know why. They're not gonna stay with you. They they're in school so they can get the type of woman that don't want to work. They're in school to get the type of woman that is a receptionist at somebody's job looking cute. They're in school to get a woman that probably ain't even born yet. I mean, why would you spend all that time and energy and money going to medical school, becoming a surgeon, becoming a doctor, a dentist or whatever to get the same thing that you are, you know, to get a highly educated woman, unless they're trying to build up to leave you for their second wife, who's going to want plastic surgery, who's, want to, who's going to want to stay home, who's going to want the credit card, who's going to go shopping all day. Stop getting men in college. Only to date for fun not husband material. You are the same age. They're going to upgrade you. Okay. Don't do it. It's not worth it. <laughs> um, go get a doctor. If you want a doctor, go get one that's already out of school and paid because most likely they're going to be paying school loans, going to be doing internships, not getting paid. You're going to have to struggle then when they make it, all, all some cute younger girl has to do is walk by and some heels, twisting, some little nurse, and he and he's gone or he's cheating. So get him after he's already successful. That's how you know they really want you. 
not together from college to you know, this. When they are successful and they approach you, that's because they really want you. They're not settling anymore. They get to pick the type of woman they want and they pick you. They say, this is the type of woman I want. I am a highly success, successful doctor, dentist, lawyer, whatever. And that's who I want. Okay. You don't marry in college before they get money. Because all you're going to do is inherit their debt, their college loans, all of that. That's all you're going to get. Okay. Don't do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Would you rather ask for an allowance or just a specific amount? I'm just going to tell them how much my bills are, but I'm going to double it. And that there is my bills and my allowance. Like if you want to date me, I need you to be a provider. I don't date men who cannot support me. So my bills are this much a month. Here is my, um, you know, I, I need a direct deposit into my account each month. I don't want to have to come and ask you for money. I'm not dating you unless there is a direct deposit or you direct deposit to my PayPal every month. Because I want to know that you can secure me. I want to be safe. I want to feel comfortable. You know, that way we don't have to discuss this anymore. Mm. How to increase your feminine energy? What practices do you suggest? Wearing, wearing nice lingerie, wearing makeup, dresses, perfume, heels. Dress the, the feminine uniform. <laughs> If you're running errands, you can wear nice flats, cute sandals, you know, cute dresses or skirts, um, you know, shorts, you know, jeans when you're running errands. But when you're going out and about, when you're dating, dresses and skirts. You get treated better by men when you are in dresses and skirts. Always. They'll do more for you. They'll open doors for you. They'll treat you more feminine and want to do more for you. So that's what you got to do, you know. Don't wake up and do the bare minimum. Wake up early and get the maximum out of your life, get the maximum effect out of your life. You, you're not going to be young forever. You're going to get older. Use what you got now to get what you want. Okay. When, by the time you want to level up and get fancy, it's going to be too late. Some of you, you know, you have your 20s, your 30s, your 40s, half of your 50s. <laughs> Unless you're Tina Knowles or Tina Turner or Oprah. But you got to have money to keep your looks on par after a certain age. So don't waste those years when you can be getting the most. You're sitting around wearing a t-shirt and leggings and flip-flops, walking to the store, sliding your flip-flops with your bonnet on when you could be getting paid to have groceries delivered to you, to have people bring you groceries, to, you know, to be able to shop online and go pick it up with somebody else's credit card number. What are you doing? Mm -mm. You... So please stop wasting your looks on looking trashy and being lazy. You're, you're, if you're at the peak of your youth, then flaunt it. Because when you take pictures, document it. Because when you look back at yourself later on in life and all you see are pictures of you in t-shirts, you're not going to have any iconic pictures to show your children. Oh, look, mom was beautiful. Oh, look at my mom. They can't put you up on their Facebook after you die in a T-shirt, some leggings that people think that you're classy or respect you. You know what I mean? Get more glam. Live life like it's special. Dress up daily whenever you, you know, are going somewhere besides like, you know, your regular routine. That is feminine. You know, 
<laughs> so yeah, I'm just saying y'all got to stop, you know, y'all got to stop doing the bare minimum and do the most if you want the most out of life. And you won't have to really work. All your work will be is looking good, looking good and lying. That's your goal. That's your that's your job from now on. Just look good and lie to them. <laughs> ah, every day is a special occasion. When I get up, I'm like, what should I wear today? What, you know, let me put an outfit together. Ooh, this is going to look cute with that. It's like you get to play dress up every day. You don't have to just say, ooh, what do I got that fits and that's clean? You know. What makeup look is going to go with this? What wig? What hair? <laughs> um, it's fun. It's fun getting ready once you get used to it. It's, um, it's fun. Once you throw out all those crappy clothes and get you some nice clothes, you don't have to dig and, and find stuff that fits because you already have it. Um... And like when you're on dates, don't order giant meals. Don't be ordering a steak and a lobster. Order something feminine, you know? I know you want to eat, baby. I know you want to eat. Save that for when you go out with your friends or your family. Eat all you want. But when you go on dates, don't order all that crap. Okay? Don't order nothing you got to struggle with either. Eat. Someone says eat before the date. Exactly. Um, do we only need to dress up on dates? I dress up most days. I don't care. I mean, I don't dress formal. I don't dress like I'm going out to a five-star restaurant, but I dress nice. I can go anywhere and look like I belong. You know, I, I have an outfit. I put it together, the shoes, the purse, everything. I, I, I make sure I'm good. <laughs> Men don't like it when females pretend to eat little. I find no, don't you don't have to starve yourself, but just don't order a giant steak, scramp, lobster. You know, don't order all of that. Order one thing, like one. And usually, women order the the fish, or the chicken, or some type of small meal. You don't get the steak and the shrimp like he does. You get the small, small. You ask, yes, yeah, scallops are good, fish or grilled chicken. You don't ask for the big ribeye or the, the filet mignon with the shrimp and the, the, da, 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 and the extra sauce and the extra butter. And the, you don't ask for all that. No, no, I don't get no A1. Don't get it with, make sure it's well done, burn it. No. I'm eating steak and shrimp. That's just the ghettoest thing. You know, you think you done made it when you're eating steak and shrimp. No, that's not. That's not it. Most women are concerned about their looks. They're not going to eat all of that stuff. So, or, you know, even if you eat it at home and cook it at home, don't eat it out. You know, unless you're dining with the Dusty, then, you know, you, ooh, you classy. You like steak and shrimp. <laughs> you're right I don't I hardly ever order shrimp I get scallops what's a scallop find out scallops and asparagus the house salad with balsamic vinaigrette please don't get no extra ranch and cheese Y'all got Thousand Island? No. Y'all got French? No. Y'all got ranch? Thank you, Barbara. Thanks for sharing all of this. You don't have to. I accept mediocre. I don't accept mediocre, and they see me as high value. Exactly. <laughs> I don't care if you drink ranch. Do not order it. It is just don't look good. Order it when you are eating by yourself or with your kids or with your family.
Don't eat pasta. No. Shrimp scampi, you got to slurp noodles. No. If you're going to eat some type of pasta, make sure it's one you can stab with your fork, like pine pasta or bow tie pasta or something like that. Or ask if they could substitute the spaghetti noodles or the angel hair pasta with pine or whatever. Something you can stab. Mm -hmm. And if you have to use a knife, Make sure you know how to properly use your utensils so where you don't look crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> don't ask for any mustard and don't get fried food on your date either. Okay. I'm sorry. Don't get fried food on your date. That is not, that's not cute. Oh, I want the fried seafood platter. No. <laughs> Only broke and class, classless people go for the fried menu. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Eat it with your family. Eat it with your friends. Go go, go crazy when you're out with them. Go get all the fried food you want on a date. Grilled, blackened, sautéed. <laughs> I'm just trying to help y'all because some of y'all don't know. Nobody told you. So I'm helping. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm a picky eater. Pho, 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 like the Vietnamese soup. If he, want, if he picked that place and he wants you to experience pho, fine. But you don't pick that place. If he chooses it, fine. Eat it as neat as you can. Okay. Do it as neat as you can. Okay. Shira, can we do an after hours chat that has to do with the exchange, working out the physical in these new mutually beneficial relationships? That's up to you. That's your choice. You know, do what you want to do. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> what about dessert? Skip it. Or ask if they have a fruit play, fruit plate or something lined. Or skip it. Ask for coffee instead or something like that. I'd rather have a coffee or a drink, an after meal drink or coffee instead of dessert. It's more classy. And if you get dessert, you know, um, maybe you could share it if he wants dessert or if he suggests it. But if they ask, try to skip it. Mm -hmm. Dessert can be sexy if you know how to lick the fork. <laughs> it can, yes. Um, cries and fat. <laughs> a fruity alcoholic drink. <laughs> you don't eat out a lot. Right. Um, I hate seeing people leave with doggy bags. Yeah, I say don't do doggy bags. Just leave it on the table. And don't eat everything on your plate. Leave some. I'm 47 and I went on a date recently with an older gentleman at an expensive restaurant. Although I ordered a appetizer and seafood entree, stayed away from too much bread and had leftovers. Okay, well, you know, you have to kind of understand who you're eating with. If you're eating with someone that does the same thing as you do and they don't see anything wrong with it, then great. But if you're trying to, you know, if you're dating a, a, a man who comes from wealth and don't, they don't take home doggy bags and, you know, they eat like that every day, all day. And, you know, it's different. But if you're the person you're with is doing the exact same thing, ordering fried food, taking to go bags, then do what you got to do. But if you want to seem classy and you're dating someone and 
you know, a different class than you, that has a lot more money than you, you don't do those things. That's it. You know, if, if he's ordering the same thing, you go ahead and feel free, you know. <laughs> and also, it, it if they're not ordering the same thing, it lets them know you have high standards if you don't do any of those things, you know. Oh, I'm sorry. I only I don't want, you know, mm -mm. Um, and you don't want to be stereotyped because if you know what, when waiters go to your table, especially black people. Well, here's the fried menu. They'll, they'll point it straight up to you. Well, I don't I don't know what to get. Well, the fried menu is on this page It's cheap. And that's what y'all eat. It's usually the cheapest. It's, it's cheaper than sauteed, grilled or blackened. <laughs> You don't want to be stereotyped. You don't want to be given the cheap food. You don't want to be ordering anything fried. <laughs> mm-hmm. Ready to date a wealthy man now. Yes. I didn't want to take my food home from True Lux, but my date suggested it, so I did. Okay, well, if they suggest it, that's fine, but don't. Ask for a doggy bag and a to-go drink and all that kind of crap. Extra mints and blah, 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 and put some extra ranch in there too. Can I get some bread? Don't do all of that. <laughs> don't act. Don't grocery shop in the restaurant. <laughs> what about a grilled lobster tail? Okay, here's my thing about lobster tail. It shows that you can't eat that on a daily basis and that. You're using that date to get a lobster tail. You know, that's what I think about ordering lobster on a date. If that's the special and it's suggested. Or if he asks you if you want it. If you do fine, but you don't order it on your own. You can order something just as expensive, but don't get the lobster if you have other choices. You know what I mean? Because it just looks like. You don't ever get that type of food and you're going to get it on this date. You got to think about how other people are viewing you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Stay away from steak and lobster unless you are at a steakhouse type restaurant. Um, I still wouldn't order steak. at a, I don't eat steak, but if I'm at a steakhouse, I would order just the seafood alone. I wouldn't get both. Or I get like a fish or a chicken. I don't, I wouldn't do steak unless they just want you to do steak. Oh, you got to try this. Oh, you got to try that. And you got to get it like, unless they suggest it. You know what I mean? That's why I'm saying let them lead. Ask them what they suggest. What do you think I should get? Now, if they're trying to be cheap. And they say, oh, you should get this because, it's you know, if you know it's cheap, just like get that and then order an appetizer or a salad or soup or something extra on the side. So it evens out the price. So, OK. <clears throat> Your steak was raw. A lot of people eat their steak rare to medium rare. They say, oh, you can't get the full flavor of steak. I don't eat steak. I don't eat beef. But if you go and you order beef and you get it well done, that's ghetto, too. If, you, if you're if you not going to get it medium to medium, well, they think, a lot of people think that you know how to eat steak. So don't even bother. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm not passing up steak at a high-end steakhouse. Exactly. This is all I'm talking about. If you go to a high-end steakhouse and you want the steak, get the smallest piece. Get the smallest the smallest one. Okay. And don't get it well done. Get it medium or medium well, but don't get it well done. Because that looks, that's the same thing as ordering extra ranch. <laughs> lamb. Yeah. You can get lamb. I don't care. That's, that's, that's classy. Mm-hmm. You sound like you can get really loud. I can. But when I'm acting, you can hardly hear what I'm saying. You have to lean in close to hear what I'm saying. I have to whisper it in your ear and seduce you and get some money out of you. Okay. But I can't get loud. I do have kids that I have to yell at on a daily. Hurry up. But I know how to act. 
And that's all you need. <laughs> Thank you. I don't eat lamb either. Mm -mm, you know that. Mm. Salmon is the answer. Someone says, yes. If you've ever been a waiter or waitress, you always notice the ladies will order the fish or the salmon or the seafood and the men will order the steak. Steak is masculine. Seafood is feminine. So I'm saying. And it's low calorie. <laughs> Do wealthy men like flat butt? I don't think, I mean, older guys, they really don't care. Older, older, wealthier men, they don't care. They like, as long as you look good. <laughs> I'm pescatarian, yes. Um. So that's what I'm saying. Just could, somebody taking you somewhere you never get to eat. It shows, you know what I'm saying? I'm not passing nothing up at an expensive takeout. Exactly. That's exactly how you're going to come off. Desperate, like you never ate there before. You know what I'm saying? So you don't want to get all of that. Okay. Maybe do it on a date you don't like. Someone that you don't like and you know you're never seeing them again. Do it. Do the ratchetness over there. But if this is a man that you want to call you back, don't do it. <laughs> And I know a lot of people say, well, I like what I like. Yes. If you're just concerned about that moment and putting food in your mouth and not the long run, then do what you got to do. <laughs> and if you notice, the waiters will also stereotype you. They will. They You come in acting all like you ain't never been nowhere before. They're going to offer you all the things they know you're going to ask for. They don't do that to everyone, okay? If you go out to eat and your waiter is offering you extra stuff, it's because they know you're going to ask for it. I'm not playing. Like, go out to eat in a nice place and notice they're not going to ask the other people that order the same thing as you order if they want extra this and extra that, especially if you're black and ghetto and you ain't never been nowhere like that before, they're going to be like, oh, would you like extra lemons? If you order water or tea, they're going to ask you if you like extra lemons. So you can make lemonade. <laughs> if you order a salad and you ask what type of dressing do you have, they're going to start out with ranch. And then when you select whatever dressing that you choose, they're going to ask if you want extra dressing. You know they do this because, you know, it's because you're always like you ain't never had nothing before. You need extra everything. You don't like it how it's supposed to be. And you don't know how to order in a the restaurant. They're, gonna also, <laughs> they're always going to ask you if you want it to go bag. Or a to-go cup. Do you like your drinks to go? They're going to ask you that. Mm -hmm. There. So, if you come in there looking like you finna ask for everything extra, they're going to suggest it. You only have to ask. That's why you don't go in there like you've never had anything before. <laughs> Take yourselves out to eat so that you're not desperate on dates. Take yourself out to eat on the weekends or during lunch to nice places. The lunch menu is a lot cheaper. You can afford it. Take yourself out to eat so that you're familiar with the menu. Look at the menu before you go at the restaurant that you, if you know the name of the restaurant, do all of that so you don't sound stupid mispronouncing stuff um, or let him order for you. You know what I'm saying? Don't be that person that's asking for extra stuff.
Mm-hmm. I never, if they, if they suggested to go cup to me or my kids, the kids won't even take it. Layla, stop. Mm-mm, I want that. <laughs> no, thanks. We're going to Starbucks after this, you know, no, thanks. <laughs> they won't take it anymore. Like I won't take it either. I'm like, no, thanks. Um, you sure? I don't need it. No, thanks. I don't want to get dirty in my car. You know, um, I have, if I'm thirsty, I go get something else to drink. I'm tired of this drink or, you know, something like that. So don't, don't be the stereotype is what I'm saying. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right. Be bougie. That's right. So please, y'all, be extra feminine. Don't bring your don't bring your <laughs> ratchet ways to the restaurant. Do not agree to any type of buffet unless it's Indian food, because I mean, a lot of those places are buffet, but it's still expensive. Don't agree to any buffets. Do not bring your ratchet restaurant habits to any date. Save it for when you eat alone. OK. Um, don't talk loud. Do not get the waiter's attention. You get the man to get the waiter's attention for you. Okay. Don't be picky. Don't send stuff back. Okay. If you don't like it, just don't eat it. Just play around with it. Smile, drink, drink, eat the salad or the vegetables. And if he says, oh, you don't like your meal? Da, 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 I was like, oh no, I've gotten full. I'm just so full off the bread or the appetizers or the salad. Mm, I'm just so full. Don't complain or send it back. You look like you are hard to please. People watch how you treat waiters and waitresses to determine the type of person you are. They watch if you have manners, if you're going to put the napkin in your lap, if you're going to use your fork and knife properly. How you're going to drink your drink, sip your sip your wine. They're going to watch all of this. You're going to see if you talk with your mouth open. You know. So be careful when you go out to nice restaurants. And if you're younger and the, the gentleman is older, you're going to get stares. People are going to look at you, especially if it's a fine dining. People are going to watch you to make sure that you're not an escort a sugar baby or a hooker. There are, if you look classy enough to be there, you're dressed cute, you're feminine. This is, this could possibly be your boyfriend or fiance, not the man for the evening. Okay. That's why you need to look classy, like wifey, not like Instagram chick that they found on scene arrangements. You need to look like a wife when you go out with these men. So people they're going to stare, but they're going to stare a lot less. Like when I go out with James, I'm way younger than him. But they know I'm not a prostitute and they know I'm not a hooker or an escort. They know I'm wife because I'm wearing wife clothes, wife shoes, wife purse. And, <laughs> you know, first lady attire. So if you want to not be seen as the hooker, or the fling, or the escort of the evening, or the stripper that they beg to take out, wear classy clothes. Don't wear no Instagram, don't wear no Fashion Nova. Classy clothes, okay? No highlights, no blonde wigs, unless you're born with blonde hair. Mm hmm. Be if you're going out with an older man to a nice establishment, be mistaken for his wife, not his mistress, not his side chick, not the stripper he is infatuated with, not the escort. But the wife, OK. <laughs> Don't be afraid to tell your fashion Nova friend that you are not going to eat out with them in a fine dining restaurant. Exactly. If you're going on Fashion Nova to find clothes to wear, make sure you find the classiest outfit that fits 
not skin tight. You know, I know a lot of people like Fashion Nova. I have a Fashion Nova dress that's cute, okay? But it's classy. I went for, I have a black, like, fancy dress that could be worn anywhere. Uh, fancy, but it's not your typical Fashion Nova. So if you find something classy, go for it. As long as the material don't look cheap, go for it. But don't just put click, keep clicking on everything because Kim Kardashian wears it. Don't do that. This is not reality television. You don't want to be mistaken as someone, you know, like her. <sighs> um, yeah, a lot of people see celebrities as classy. They're not classy. They dress that way to get attention, to get followers, to get fans, to get gigs, to get jobs, modeling jobs to show off their figure because if they wear anything else, they'll look fat. You know, they're wearing those things for male fans to be a sexual icon. They're not wearing them to get to get a husband to be treated with respect or not to be stared at, at fine dining establishments when you're out, when they're out with their man, they're not wearing it for attention. They're wearing it, most likely to get followers, more people buying their products, more people clicking and on their Instagram, they're wearing it to get paid, okay? No highlights. Oops, I just have had biolage on my hair. I mean, I mean, if you want the highlights, great, but sometimes it's just too trendy. You want to be classy. You know, if you just think about it. This older man, if especially if he's got money and he's older, he does not want all those people thinking you're a, you know, a escort or a stripper. He wants you can you might be mistaken for his daughter his niece or his wife, but you don't want to be mistaken as, oh, look at him out with that stripper. Oh, you know, the uncomfortable looks are going to make him feel some type of way. And he's not going to want to take you to those nice places anymore or be seen out in public with you anymore. He's going to go try to see back online if he can find a classier one that it will pass for fitting in into his world. You know, so make sure you fit in. You're not sticking out like a sore thumb. You're feminine. You're flirty. You're smiling. You're not. You don't look like you just stepped out off the pole. You don't look like you just walked off of Instagram. You want to look classy and feminine and not like a Kardashian. Okay. Unless that's what he likes and he asked, and that's why he picked you. Okay. <laughs> Turn heads, but don't raise eyebrows. Yes. <laughs> Someone says Kanye is trash. I think the reason Kanye liked Kim is because Beyonce and Jay were together and he was trying to compete with Jay Z as far as getting uh, an influential woman just as famous. Didn't matter what she was famous for, but he had to compete. He didn't get her because that's what he valued. He got her because he was competing with Jay-Z. That's it. Oh, I could have Kim Kardashian. She has a lot of influence. You know, he was doing it for status. You know, Beyonce had status. Jay-Z already had status. They got together. But then... Since they were this power couple in entertainment, Kanye wanted to do the exact same thing. He couldn't find anybody that was higher than Beyonce or more talked about or broke the Internet. So he went and found Kim because she can do that. OK, and he don't care if she poses new shows everything to everybody. He liked the fact that she is famous. That's it. So. He doesn't care what she puts on. 
he wanted to design clothes for her. So my thing is, that is not a good example because he's exploiting her. He's using her for her influence so he could be a power couple and compete with Jay-Z. Totally different reason, you know? <laughs> and I think everyone knows that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I said, I said, I talked about breath earlier. Make sure your breath, someone says, get your cavities filled. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So, yes. Never chew gum. Yep. Said that earlier. Mm hmm. Hygiene. Country clubs. What's wrong with gum? Nothing's wrong with gum. Go ahead, chew it, see what happens. What about a gap? Can we cl you close those two? Um, if your gap bothers you, do what you need to do. Some people like their gap. Mm -hmm. I have a gap. It's not, it's not super big, but I like it. I would never fix it. Um, it just makes you different, you know. It makes you stand out in the crowd. If it's, if it's a problem, it's a problem. Men won't ask you out. If they see a picture of you smiling and you got a gap and then they ask you out and they've seen your gap, that means they obviously don't mind or like it, you know. But if you're like this on your picture and then you show up with a big gap, that's the problem. Show off your gap in pictures so you know that they don't mind or that it's okay or that they like it. Mm -hmm. I'm still live. I sure am. I'm about to go, though. Um, let's see. Nobody has ever said anything about my gap. Well, then don't worry about it. They might not say anything about it, but if they don't call you back, you know, perhaps it, it wasn't their taste. But some people like it. Um, if you want braces, get braces. They have Invisalign now. Get that if you want it. <laughs> what am I doing this weekend? I'm going to the neighbor's birthday party next door. <laughs> um, the My husband's uh, friend is also our neighbor. I'm going to his birthday party I don't know. Mm. She, they just got an outdoor kitchen put in and some new floors. So I guess they want to show it off. Living in a nice neighborhood is cool because the husbands compete. Like now James want to get hardwood. <sighs> okay. I want hardwood floor. Now he going to want an outside kitchen. Just keep upgrading. Come on. <laughs> Compete. See, when you're around successful people, you want to become more successful. You want to upgrade your stuff so you know, you know, that you can do it too. <laughs> How old am I? I am old. I'm almost over the hill. I'm 40 next year. I'm 39. I'll be 40 next year. Mm -hmm. They're going to get me a black cake with a coffin on it, which is fine with me. I like that. Am I the prettiest wife on the block? Mm -hmm. I think so. Maybe there is a cute wife across the street if she fixed herself up, but she don't. There is a cute girl across the street, but she wears crap. Don't put no makeup on. Got a bunch of kids. Her husband's a minister. White dude. But she could be cute. Mm -hmm. Does she watch? Oh, she needs to watch your videos? Nah. They're like, you know, they're the kind of people that 
have a bunch of kids and they just all about their kids. They just kids are the most important thing. Let myself look bad and do what I need to do. What if you already have traditional braces? Is that childish to older men? Not if they like young looking chicks. Not, I mean, some men might find it like a fetish. Like, oh, she has braces like a, a teenager. <laughs> you know, men like them kids, like them young ones. Um, does she drive a van? It's like a, she has like a, 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 a forerunner, a SUV. Yes. No van. Thank goodness. So I met this lawyer that drives a Bentley while working and he asked me to a baseball game. How would you wait? Hold on. A baseball game that same night. I couldn't because I had a date with a college professor. How would you have, how would you handle this? Um, if he asked you out to a game that night and he's driving a Bentley and he's a lawyer, it means you are not the only one. Okay, don't risk the college professor. He might be more legit. I don't know. He might not make as much money, but he would definitely call you back and take you more seriously than the dude with the Bentley that asks you out on the spot, don't even know you, ask you to a baseball game. You know what I'm saying? It was a nice gesture. If you hadn't had the date, you could you should have went. But since you already had a date and that has more potential for long term, I would have skipped out and went with the college professor and got the other dude's number and went out with him another day. Okay. Um, I'm still on here, mm -hmm. but I'm about to go. So thank you guys for tuning in. I hope. You got some good tips. Um, if you have any better tips, add them in the comments when this goes back. And hopefully people will appreciate them. Do I drive? Of course I drive. I live in Texas. If you don't drive, you don't go nowhere. <laughs> okay. You got to drive in Texas. It's too big. <laughs> Everything is spread out in Texas. You gotta drive. I've been driving since I was 15. I got a I got a license early. <laughs> what kind of car I got? A Mercedes. It's a SUV. The GLK. Black. Mm -mm, I traded in the Jeep. Mm -hmm. uh, you got a bands too. I had a Jeep, mm -hmm, but I traded it in. People weren't respecting me enough with the Jeep. I wasn't getting the respect that I deserved. <laughs> no, you know what happened? Someone parked close to my Jeep and they just opened the car door and scratched it all up and dented it. And I was so pissed because that was the second time that I just say, you know what? People don't do this to Mercedes. People don't do this to Benz's. They respect the Benz. When you're driving, they let you go first. I'm getting a Benz. I'm, I'm out. Can't do this. I didn't even get it fixed. I was just so pissed. I just drove it up and, and said, take this. I need something better. Yes, I was just mad because what y'all don't respect the Jeep, but you ain't gonna. I've never had that happen to my Mercedes that I had before. Nobody ever does that. They park far, they make sure they don't hit your car because they respect it. If you got a Jeep, oh, this is just they ain't no, it's not you know, it's not luxury, da, 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 da. you know. But if it's a Benz, oh, watch out, don't hit that car, oh, let them go, you know, it's like that. So you get more respect with a better car. <laughs> so I've learned because people will scratch your crap up. They don't care. I was sitting in the damn car, excuse my language, when they opened the door on one, when they opened the door and got in a little dusty cop car that they had bought on auction. 
sitting at Taco Cabana. I was so mad. And then I didn't say nothing because they looked like they would have had a gun and shot me. I'm like, and then they're going to just pull off. I'm looking at, they left white scratch marks and a dent on my car. I was like, I'm going to get me a new car. <sighs> I'm still angry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I am still angry. I was like, I don't, I, I hate waiting because I would have had to take it to get fixed. I had to get like a rental car and all that crap. I just, I'm just going to get me a new car. Forget this. Y'all ain't going to do this to no beans. <clears throat> <laughs> I should have reported them to the police. I think I took a picture of their license plate. Yeah. But I knew they probably had warrants anyway. And if they had kids, their kids are going to get put in the system. So, you know, being nice, like considerate, I just went and traded the car. I mean, Dusties, Pygmies, Ratchets. They don't care about nothing. They don't care about themselves. They will litter. They will dent your car and keep it moving and it's just not worth it <laughs> ah. how not to be so emotional with men have a goal until you get that goal you don't invest emotionally until you get the commitment you don't invest emotionally until you get the ring you invest less emotional emotionally have goals and don't invest emotionally until they are gotten then you give a little bit more and a little bit more and then by the time you are married if you get married you're invested emotional emotionally just as much as he is invested into you materially so it evens out okay <laughs> that's it if you fall head over heels before he's even taking you on date six you, it's too much if you done told him you loved him first, you did wrong. He's supposed to tell you first. You don't tell a man that you love him first. They're supposed to fall in love with you. Okay? If you have to tell a man you love him first, you're wrong. <laughs> in relationships, you still don't invest fully. You, you, if you are in a committed relationship, your emotional investment should be about 65% and that's it. The rest is you. Okay. If they think they got you, if you're predictable, if they know your weaknesses, they will use them against you. Do not invest a hundred percent in any relationship. 65% is the most you ever need to go. I'm so sorry. Unless it's your children. In any man, you only invest emotionally 65% because what happens if he cheats or leaves you? What are you going to do? You know, if you're, if you can easily get over somebody because you're only invested 65%, you only lost about 15% of your emotion, you're good. You can move on quick. If you give everything, invest 100%, you know, you're going to be mentally disturbed if he does leave you because you invest it too much. So don't ever, I don't care. That's why it's easier to be married to someone who is not like, oh, mega uh, attractive because you're not going to emotionally invest in someone as much as you would if you are super attracted to them. Okay. Invest it all when you get married. Nope. Not even after you get married. Invest 65% in any relationship with any man at any time. 50 less if you're not married. If you're just dating, 10%. If you're in a long-term relationship, 30%. If you've been living with this fool for years, 40% if he's paying your bills. When you get married, 
because some of it is acting. Okay? But that's it. Mm -hmm. I love, yep, yeah, a man is supposed to love you way more. If you're, if you love your man more than he loves you, you love too much. Pull it back until he loves you more. And they like that challenge. Mm -hmm. How to pull it back. Stop doing too much. Stop telling them everything. Stop texting. Stop calling. Stop sitting next to him. Stop trying to cuddle with him all the time. Stop initiating sex. Stop doing all of that. Let him chase you. Yeah, you pull it all the way back. Don't tell him you love him every day. Maybe once a week. Maybe once a month. <laughs> Stop doing it. Um, Let him miss you. You, if you're doing all that, it's too much. It's smothering. They don't like it. So, yeah, tell them you love them. I love you. Once a month. At least they know you mean it. You tell them that every day. It's like hearing good morning. It doesn't mean anything anymore. I love you, honey. I love you, honey. I love you, honey. I love you, honey. It loses its meaning and value. They don't. They don't, it doesn't matter anymore once you say it a thousand times. You say it once a week. You say it once a month. It's going to be more valuable if you say it once a month than you say it once a week. It's going to be more valuable if you say it once a week than you do every day. So stop doing that. They, you don't have to tell them you love them. You don't have to do any of that. If you let them, they might tell you they love you. OK. If you are giving all the attention and you're showering them and you're giving them all this love, then how are they going to have a chance to do the same back to you? At, the only reason that they will is because it's only a response to what you're initiating. Let them initiate it. But what if he says it more often? What do you say back? Just like, oh, you too, baby. Mm -hmm. But as long as he says it first, it's fine. But you don't say it first. And don't make it a habit of saying it when you're on the phone. You know what I'm saying? I know some people get in the habit of saying, okay, love you, bye. Don't get in the habit because it means nothing anymore. Don't say it until you really mean it. Don't say it until they deserve it. Don't say it until they do something good. Don't say it until you want them to feel special. I don't say, I shoot, I, the last time I told James I love him was like three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> In a text. <laughs> mm -mm. What if he says, I love you during sex? Does that mean he's lying? Yep. Yeah. If he can't tell you that in public, in daylight, in front of other people, it's a lie. Um, <laughs> I just knew how to keep a plan. I need to know how to keep a plan B when you live with your man. Put him in the friend zone. Make sure you're. he's in a friend zone, but you know if you let him out the friend zone, he'll want to be with you. What do you do when your hubby is long term but doesn't respond to text right away? Then take an hour or more to go through this with your husband. They take an hour or more. Do you? I don't. I don't even text James unless I need him to bring something home from the store. Um, if you're if you're married and you're trying to text your husband and he's not texting back, blah 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 blah. blah. Um. I feel like if you've been married for a long time, it's not a big deal. I feel like they're working, they're busy. Uh, I don't know. I just, it doesn't bother me because I hardly text them. It doesn't hurt my feelings. 
Because when you hardly text someone, when you text, they're texting back, okay? They might think it's a mistake and you text them by accident because you don't text them at all. Stop texting him. And when you do text, he's going to answer quick. Because when you don't text, he don't know where you are. He don't know what you're doing. It's rare. And so obviously it's important. So stop texting him so much. You want him to answer. You text him all day, every day. He's going to be... She won't. Oh, I'm busy. Oh, I'm driving. I'm in a bathroom. What? I'm talking to my friend. What? What you doing? Psh. Avoiding you. You know? Don't be doing it. <laughs> um. Yeah. Stop texting them so much. You don't. Why do you have to? Te- Is it important? Is somebody dying? You need something? You need some blood? If you, are you in the emergency room? You need some, him to bring you home something? <laughs> Should a plan B know you have a man? Mm, it just depends. If he's in the friend zone, let him know you have a man that you don't want and that you're trying to get out of it just like they do to you. Lie. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Um, just need to hear his voice. Okay. I just need to hear his voice. Why? Listen to the voicemail. <laughs> That's sweet. But it could be smothering to him. You know what I mean? Um <laughs> And someone says that's being needy. I get tired of boyfriend's voice. Ha ha ha. Yeah. Oh, sure. You made my first at work go by faster. Oh, he never asked me to do invitations. But when I meet him, he is lovely. What? But when I. But. I meet when I meet him, he is so lovely and flirts with me a lot. It's crazy. He never asked me to do invitations, but when I meet him, oh, of course, you make yourself too available. Of course, he's going to be happy. You like him more than he likes you because he doesn't invite you. He's flattered. Mm-hmm. That is, you know, that doesn't mean too much. It means he doesn't think about you until you call him. I need to hear the money in my bank account, someone says. <laughs> Ashira has a video on needy women. You must watch. Yes. Should you pay? Should your date pay for the babysitter? <laughs> if he's wealthy. If you're dating a normal, regular dude, probably not. But don't tell him it's for the babysitter. Just get some money first. <laughs> Don't nag your husband. My husband is an engineer. He needs to focus on his career. It makes them miss you when you get. Yeah, exactly. I don't. James, the same thing. James is at work all all day. You know, I don't bother him at work. I, if I do, I just text him, "Hey, what you doing? Bring some such and such home." He he knows that I'm thought about him. I texted him. I need something. <laughs> I don't text them what you doing, where you at, who you with. I'm like, bring this home. I need it. <laughs> hey, how you doing? That's it. And that's very, maybe once a week. Maybe once. <laughs> I look at my last text from James. Oh, let me see what it is. I sent them a picture of the dog and a cat. He sent me to, to uh, pay the bills with his credit card. And then I just put OK. That's it. <laughs> so.
So, oh, speaking of that, I need to do that. Don't ever text who you with. Exactly. Like, no, but he didn't even ask me any of those questions. Like, I'm free all day, every day. But he doesn't ask me where you at, what you're doing. But he don't ask me any of that. Um, <laughs> thank you. So you pay the bills, but with his money, of course. Get his credit card number and go online and go. <laughs> Mm hmm. So why wouldn't he pay all the bills? <laughs> That's my question. My man works 16 hours and at least three times a week. And he calls me from work saying he misses me. Oh, that's sweet. Seeing if you answer. <laughs> mm -hmm. Let that man work. In the meantime, you're finding something better. <laughs> um, I hate when I'm trying to watch you at work and my boss calls me. <laughs> Can you post a body pic on Seeking Arrangement and send a face pic of you personally? If that's the attention that you want, first and foremost, ooh, body, then then thinking of sex. Unless you're just only there for money. I mean, it can work. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm watching at work too. Huh? You see y'all getting paid to watch me? Ooh, that's to y'all smart. Y'all get paid to watch. Make a man profile on Seeking Arrangement and look at the women profiles. Check out your competition. Exactly. Don't get on secret Seeking Arrangement. Law enforcement is on there now and in light of new bills passed through Congress. Oh, God, don't get up in jail. Don't end up in jail. <laughs> if you look super good and an old man agrees to meet you, they already know the deal. You don't have to say nothing. Just show up looking good and too good, and they already know what they got to do. You know, you don't act impressed. You don't respond well. You don't do anything until they offer you something. You know, it's, it's whatever new laws. You don't go and try to ask them for money. You pick the ugliest, disgusting, most grossest one that you know will give you money just to be seen out in public with them. That's all you got to do. <laughs> Let them offer. Mm, freestyling is how you meet men now. Yes, go out, go to the nice place. <laughs> so, I mean, that's how I met James, just out and about. Didn't meet him online. You know, just be like looking the best that you can look. Go out, sit by yourself. If they like you, they're going to come over and talk to you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I would stay off the websites. <laughs> yeah. Plus, there's a lot of people that are probably catfishing and broke, and you're wasting a lot of time. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So. That's it. Yeah. So y'all, good luck out there. Be smart. Be, be feminine. Mm -hmm. So I got to go. I see. Yeah, I'm getting off. I'm getting off. 
I'm trying to get all of y'all keep asking me questions. But I'll see y'all next time. Y'all have a good weekend. Happy Friday. Bye.